What's up everybody, welcome to another episode of Retro Resident Game Night. I know that it's been two. a while since I've done one of these, you know, life, it gets in the way. But I thought I'd come back with a bang, this one, this is going to be like a two hour epic for you guys. Uh, of Resident Evil 2, one of my probably favourite games of all time. And what I'm doing, occurred. this is basically a commentary this time, I'm not actually going to be playing through this, I'm talking over a previous playthrough that I did of a no-save run, which is kind of a common thing that I do when I go back and replay this game. It's, it's almost like an artificial a difficulty that I set for myself. I'm no Enterprise speed runner. Um, it's not yet anyway, and I don't think I ever will be, because the guys experience. that can speed run this game are pretty insane and impressive. Um, the, the world record, or at least the around the world record, is under an hour, which, if, as you'll see later in this playthrough, that my time is, I think it's an hour 50 I did with this run, Thanks to the but my main goal was really get through the game, Redfield no saves, I think it's something Valentine. about the tension, and the, the kind of the risk, the risk of, you know, once you, if, when you die in a Resident Evil game, it's but over, that's it, you're done, you've got to start right back from here, at least with these original games. This is the GameCube version of Resident Evil 2 as well, which I've never played before, so this was a first this wasn't the first playthrough I did I did actually have a few playthroughs before this where I died but um, might possibly do a fun little montage later about that um, this is my first successful you no know, safe playthrough and I'm playing this with scenario uh, Claire scenario a uh, as this is considered the canon um, pathway I kind of wanted to mix with this commentary like what the Capcom considers the can the canon storyline of Resident Evil <laughs> Um, and also talk a bit about the game, of course, as well as we I'm go through it. Um, as I'm not going, I'm, I, although there will be elements when you see this playthrough, I'll be speeding through the game. I need to try to stop to take a moment to try and find some of the interesting things as well. Although, I, when I look back on this uh, video, there are, I, I noticed I could have probably done a bit more, maybe expand a bit more of the exploration I did. But oh well, there are some neat little secrets and, that I'll show you as Guys, we um, go through this. So, obviously, at, as we're seeing at the moment, this is just the opening cutscene. In all of its uh, wonderful CG glory, the this GameCube port notable thing I noticed playing through it was that it definitely Hello. looks nice compared to all of the is other versions. This, here? I think, some people consider this is the sort of the the best uh, okay. version, best looking version of uh, Resident Evil 2. The GameCube version also only comes on one disc, which uh, is pretty good. I know it's um, nothing compared to the Resident Evil 2 port on N64, which comes on a single cartridge, but. That is a story for another day that I'd love to maybe do a playthrough of that as well, maybe as a comparison, and if you guys maybe want to watch me comment over that one as well. We'll see, that's something maybe to consider in the future, but again, you know, with these retro game nights, I know, I think the last one I did, what posted was just that Sonic 3D one. I actually did have recorded a few more on their back, but I just haven't had time to kind of do commentary for them and everything, but hopefully we'll see more of that in the future. But hey, we're going to concentrate on Resident Evil 2 here, and... Here comes the iconic character, Leon S. Kennedy, who we're only going to see occasionally through this playthrough because we've been playing as well air and heard a little uh, recruit. Of course, if you guys like this um, this long, because um, this is going to be, obviously this is a long, long video, this is going to end up being, um, I'm happy to do Leon um, playthrough B, or Leon B, scenario B, and we can give that one a go as well, and I'll do a commentary over that too. But What's going on? The um, the reason I think it, one of the things I just noticed myself out. with why it kind of makes sense pop, that right? it's almost canon yeah. even First from this original game and um, blow through it. Leon's in the driver's seat, Redfield. Claire's in the passenger seat. So Redfield. when they um, both exit, Redfield. this opening cutscene is the same whichever scenario A you play through, whether you play as Leon A or Claire A. And if you play as Leon A, he ends up on the um, when you when you start up the game for real, he ends up on the passenger hey, side for some reason, but obviously it makes more sense because sure. Claire is on the passenger side, so maybe There's this was planned all along that it was supposed to be Claire on that side. And as a, as you got anyone who's played this game knows that you play through a scenario A, and then um, once you finish the game you can go through scenario B, which is the other character, um, so we'll be we we'll we'll play through B, 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 B basically, but what's pretty impressive about Resident Evil is that you can, you, you know, you okay. can have play through the first scenario as Leon or Claire, and then the second scenario as Leon and Claire, and then there's a technically a fifth scenario where you play as Punk, but yeah, maybe these are things that we'll play through. Probably don't know if you guys want to see play through all five scenarios, but you know, let me know. Okay, there might, might not be much to say really, but you know, we'll talk about sort of mechanics, and also talk about some of the derpy things I do through this playthrough as well. 
I've kept the cutscenes in with this playthrough just because it gives me a chance to maybe um, catch up with some things I'm commenting on. And um, as far as I'm aware, the cutscenes don't impact on the final game time. So, and, you know, before I just leave them in just for people to have a look if you want to compare the graphics. So here's the the good little um, text at the beginning. It's to just, this is just the beginning of the worst nightmare. A big sort of staple for the original Resident Evil games where they start with that text. And here I am running through <laughs> zombie middle Raccoon City, which for the time, you know, when I first played this game, this... This was quite a scary opening, you know, when you played on that original PlayStation 1 game. Yeah, you know, I was terrified. You know, think, God, there's zombies everywhere and you've got to run past them. And then this just so shows how far we've come in gaming, doesn't it? Um, and now it's just, right, looking on it now, it's just a few zombies, isn't it? You've just got to run past them and that's it. Definitely don't bother fighting them. So here's our first um, character that we meet. Who are, you? Who are you? What are you doing here? What are you doing? Reason, <laughs> this is this is recently I'm referenced in the Easy Allies um, podcast episode as well, where they both refer they referenced um, that, <laughs> that guy's um, the shopkeeper, the gun Ooh. shop owner's um, Sorry, infamous line. I what I quite like about this guy is if you talk to him as Claire, he um, I don't think I'd do it in this playthrough. I recorded it in a different playthrough, but if you speak to him again. I oh, he does call you darling, yeah. He calls, he calls Claire darling, but he um, doesn't obviously call wrong. Leon anything, but it would be rather amusing if he called Leon darling too. Um, as you might have noticed, the shopkeeper does have a gun in its hand, so one of the sort of secrets, which I am going to do, do in this playthrough, is you can take that, you can obtain that gun. It's basically what you can do here is you can either just run away and continue on your journey to the police station um, or if, you, if you're brave, as you're going to see here, shopkeeper's going to get attacked by zombies. You can go grab that gun um, and that's what I'm going to do here. I think I did get bit a few times when it happens. So here I go just running into there. He says he stopped breathing because you know you've got to stop to check his pulse I guess. So I get the gun but then I think, yeah I did get grabbed by one, maybe two? Yeah, the other one gets me as well. I'm playing this on, I think I've seen, it, I went for it very fast at the beginning, but this is just like normal mode um, of the game. So original mode, I believe, as they call it. Original and the best. Um, on the European version, the although this is, of course, the European GameCube version, but the European version of the PlayStation 1 version, they, I believe original mode is all that's available, or just normal mode was all that's available. There wasn't an easy mode from the get-go, as far as I'm aware. I could be wrong. Or at least it's not the same in comparison to say the American version where they have a few different difficulty modes. One way you just get you get start out with loads of guns. I think easy mode in um, most of the European versions just it gives you more ammo when you pick up ammo um, drops. So this bit, yeah, you have to go down that alley to get the get the zombies to obviously miraculously open that gate and then run past them. The main technique of this opening city section with Resident Evil 2 is really just to kind of just run. Um, you really want to kind of avoid, at least in my opinion, using your gun at all. You can obviously stop and shoot if you want to, but you really kind of just want to save that ammo if you can. The Another secret which you won't see in this playthrough is if you do, and you can do this even if you play the game for the first time, if you do manage to get to the police station area, and um, you don't pick up anything. Um, Brad Vickers, the helicopter pilot from the first game, he's also featured in Resident Evil 3 where you discover what actually happened to him. Um, he appears as a zombie in the kind of the underground passageway of the police station and he's got the special key which unlocks you outfits. With Claire that's kind of useful because she, one of her, she has a choice of two outfits I believe and one of the outfits does come with a gun so which can obviously help you um, well, I'll help you with the game, really. I think it's like an Uzi or something you get. Uh, and I'm not, I don't know actually if that, if the weapon will, will affect your score. I know if you use special weapons that you unlock when you finish the game by getting A rankings, like the rocket launcher and stuff, which uh, unlimited rocket launcher and unlimited chain gun. If you use them, it will downgrade you at the end of the game by saying, "How dare you use this thing that you unlocked?" <laughs> so. This bus bit is quite a tricky bit for if you're going to go with that no pickup run because you have to kind of push through that so those zombies there. You're going to have to really shoot them. I mean, you can just walk past and get bitten, um, but not really worth it. You want to really be um, hanging on to that health. So I think uh, it's just the last little bit where we've got to avoid a few zombies. I think I get bit in this bit as well, which is... Um, yeah, there we go. <laughs> which is not like me, but I usually am pretty good at this. And you can see this is a, a new thing for the Resident Evil series. From if you've obviously only played if you played one first and then just played two first, where you have um, 
damage appearing on the character. So when your character is becoming damaged, um, they will like basically just hold their abdomen like that. Uh, and if they that will be in like the caution zone of the health meter, and then if they go into the danger meter, the red or they're about to flatline, they'll literally slump and they won't run as effectively. And then. Um, I don't think that happens in this playthrough of me, but it's um, that's where it certainly feels a bit more tense. But it's a good way for you to kind of tell the condition of your character, but as you can see from that menu that you've just seen there, you can see I'm currently on caution. I don't know why I didn't just use, use the herb then, but yeah, the, the levels of health essentially is you've got fine, which is the green, you've got caution, which is the yellow, you've got another caution, which is the orange, and then you've got danger, which is the red, and then you're just dead, <laughs> which I obviously don't see that and, um, on the screen. And we've gone to uh, the Spencer match. Sorry, the police station. <laughs> so, this is essentially... That's what's quite clever with Resident Evil 2. Is Resident Evil 2, um, its main core is... It's another mansion, really. It's just it's the police station. It's just a so, and then we're just going to be running around this, collecting keys, going doing a few puzzles. Um, and we're just going to... I've forgotten this guy's name off the top of my head. Um, <laughs> since I've played this game so much. Um, are you the only officer say, left actually, in the building? If we, if we pay attention, uh, I should say you? in the GameCube version. Claire, Claire Redfield. You can skip the cutscenes. I'm looking scenes. for my brother Chris. No, we lost say contact with him over ten days uh, but yeah, ago. Chris. Yeah, you Jill can um, basically you can, you can skip all cutscenes in the original PlayStation One version of the game. We should I should just say original PlayStation. Them. One. In that game, you can only skip the kind of the CG About fancy cutscenes, which ago, don't look so fancy these days. Um, but these bit, but you can't skip these like sort of general in-game cutscenes, uh, in which in the GameCube version you can, in the which is pretty cool. This city. The you probably should say at this point Chris actually, because I've, I've briefly touched on the different ports. The game was of course released originally on the PlayStation, um, and it was ported was to Dreamcast um, N64, which is a, a very fascinating compressed port. And it was ported, no of course, to uh, the, the, the GameCube, which is one uh, version we're playing here, and the PC as well, okay? which, um, unfortunately, for the PC version, that is yet to Just appear on the thing. Well, I guess the only place it would ever appear would possibly be good old games, but here. I think that'd be kind of neat, because the original dark. trilogy was released to PC, so the first the Resident Evil... In the um, now go. Second Resident Evil um, and the third one were all had PC ports, but we've never seen them like come okay. back to life at all on good old games or Steam or Just anything. But it would be, be nice to see if that happened, but it hasn't yet. Oh well. Um, and of course, there is the infamous Tiger handheld a Resident Evil 2, um, which. Dare we even call that a port, really? Because it's just black and white garbage from the footage that we, you, we see. But um, it's very unlikely I'll ever own that game because I don't have a Tiger handheld or ever play it. I don't, I don't need to have. I, I, I've kind of, I'd like to have every version of this game. That'd be pretty. This version of the game, but I don't need that Tiger handheld. I mean, if I come across it at car boot sale or something, I won't say absolutely won't say no to it, and I'll pop it on the shelf and admire it and think, mm, I'm so, I'm so proud as a game collector to have every version. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, nah, no. Nah, I, I, the only one, I, the only two I don't have uh, versions of this game is uh, Dreamcast and PC. I'm not going to be too sad if I never obtain them. Um, if I find them, I find them. If I don't, I don't. And that's kind of the same with this GameCube version. I, I don't. I think I briefly mentioned this to other people, but in the space of a month, I don't know how this happened. I managed to obtain basically all six GameCube games. I, I, I've always had just the disc only of the. A re um, of Resident Evil the remake on GameCube, which I obtained from like a closing down blockbuster years ago. But um, I always kind of wanted the GameCube games just because I was always fascinated by the ports. And then somehow I waltz into a charity shop as you do one day and I see, I think then I found Resident Evil 0 and 3. Yeah, and then I, I picked those up and I was like, neat, but now I need to get Resident Evil 2, Code Veronica, and all those other ones. And then, um,. Yeah you, go, yeah, you go into other places. I think I got them all from charity shops, I believe. Maybe... Uh, I think I got one of them from CEX, maybe. I can't remember which one, but it might be... It'll be the remake again. Yeah, remake, I think I, I ripped but with the box version, the manual. I got from good old CEX. But all the others I found in charity shops. Um, within a space of a month, different ones as well, which is just weird. <laughs> it's just... Uh, you'd expect them maybe to be in the same ones. And so yeah, I was very, I was a happy, happy camper, and I thought I'm definitely gonna play through all versions of these. Um, but it's nice to have the box copies. So here's the the old liquor scene, and this is kind of the reason why I picked up the bow gun. Really, is this is the bow gun is garbage. I hate it. I don't like it at all. But it is pretty. It's quite useful for this first liquor scene, which I 
I generally like to take out if I can. I mean, you can just run past them, to probably, to be honest, that's probably the best thing to do. But these liquors are little puzzles that <laughs> they can be a real nuisance. In fact, one of the playthroughs, which when I tried to do the, um, when I was recording a no-save playthrough of this game, um, I was killed by a licker that did a, a basically a big lunge attack, a bit like what the hunters do in the first game, and it just took me out. I was only on yellow caution as well. <laughs> it just wrecked my day. So, you'll know this playthrough. I have been a little bit more cautious with liquors, <laughs> as you'll see later, which I'll probably try and highlight actually. Um, yeah. It's not really just a lot to say at this first. The first, this first section of um, the game, we're just running through. Uh, we're basically heading to the stars office. Um, Nemesis isn't in this game, and we're at this point, really, when you're when you're in the police station, if you're a first timer, I would just say take out everything and everything, really, because most of the corridors now are quite narrow and they're hard to. You know, it's hard to run past enemies. There are opportunities that you can run past, which. Um, You'll kind of see later, there are some rooms which are quite large, which will help you um, run past the zombies. The zombies are quite slow, but as you'll certainly see in this playthrough, um, they have had the habit of doing this kind of like lungy thing they do, which then they end up grabbing your leg, but when that happens, the player just um, handily just kicks their head off. They did this in the um, first Resident Evil as well, but the whole lunge effect that they do seems quite common in this game. The zombies are obviously very slow Resident Evil 2, but when we bump up to Resident Evil 3, they do pop, they do um, massively improve their speed. <laughs> they get a lot faster. Not like the sprinting crimson heads or anything, but they do speed up a bit. Um, I have been replaying Resident Evil 3 actually on the PSP, sort of when I'm, you know, when I'm having my breaks at work, when I have an opportunity, to, when I have an opportunity to have a break these days. Um, I'm, I've, I've, I've come, completed Resident Evil 3 again, uh, finally, which is one of the of, of the original trilogy. It's the one I've played the least, which is weird actually. I've played the the original Resident Evil and uh, Resident Evil 2 a lot um, on PSP, port, any sort of portable system. I know I mentioned about ports earlier, but the PSP versions are basically just the PlayStation versions, but they're downloadable on PlayStation Network to this day, and I highly recommend them actually. Especially if you're a portable guy or gal, um, you know, um, like, so you can, you can still put them onto PSP or Vita as well, which is very handy. Um, or you can just play them on your PlayStation 3. Um, why you can't play them on your PlayStation 4, I still don't get, but hey, Sure, Sony. <laughs> I mean, that's the. I, I'll still sort of. I mean, as the, I'm, I'm the retro guy, this is why I whinge about these things. But you know, Xbox is do, is just spinning circles with the backwards compatibility at the moment, and still improving. You know, we recently had that announcement of though of more original Xbox games announced coming to um, the Xbox One backwards compatibility, and I'm really happy with that, especially with um, Star Wars Republic Commando coming. And I, I think I just said to a good friend of mine the other day, I said, if you know, if, God, if they if they bring that there, I think I'm all I'm all about an Xbox One, but I can't actually afford it at stage, so I've shot myself in the foot there. <laughs> Still have to stick with my original big, bulky, black Xbox One, which in a way doesn't look much different from the original Xbox, that's it, in size and magnitude. Um, yeah, but I'm really happy with that, but that's not Resident Evil, is it? So let's just stick to Resident Evil 2. So yeah, done this little basic puzzle just here where you push the um, columns into the designated spots. Um, you can... There's like, there's like a message you can read on the, um, the statue, which I possibly gives you a hint. It's almost quite clear what you're supposed to do. Um, just move the, move the, um, move the statues into the columns, and then yeah, it unlocks the gem. I think he says if the gods are looking at me or something like that, I release the gem, something along those lines. Uh, yeah, I probably should also mention it's a good time to say this that I'm just skipping through the um, Chris like this Chris's Chris's diary. I'm skipping all the the note taking. I'm kind of thinking, looking back on this, maybe I should have kept those in for maybe people that have never experienced this game. So, but I'm, my thinking here is that. I kind of like you guys, it's probably good to experience this yourself, if you play, if you're, I'm, I'm assuming that most people watching this game don't care about Resident Evil 2 and have no intention of playing it, or, um, you know, they've played it through themselves already, so that's why I'm kind of, there's certain areas that I'm just skipping through and certain areas I thought I might focus on, but hey, that's me, <laughs> that's the way I've decided to play through this. A fax comes through just on this machine here. I, I think I just ignore it in this playthrough. But yeah, yeah, the, the the documents are good though. If you're playing for this game yourself, they give you backstory to what's actually going on in the background. Chris's diary basically is him whinging about nobody believing him about the mansion incident, and um, that fax I believe is for Chris. I believe about 
about something that he was investigating. Uh, yeah, it shows you how often I pay attention to these documents. It's been a while since I played for them. But, you know, if... Um, if people want me to do more of a story focused playthrough, um, I'm happy to go through, pick up documents and put like a dumb voice in on that I literally do to read through them. Um, I think I did that on a previous Resident Evil playthrough of the original game, which is funny, for old Itchy Tasty. I don't think I've got that on my YouTube channel, I don't know if I've still got the footage of that, but oh well. So yeah, we've got the um, we've got that little disc you saw me pick up with the unicorn on it. So we've got to run back to the hall. You know, it's first bit of backtracking here, and then this is gonna this this first section is a bit of um, kind of you know, quite a lot of backtracking actually. I do have a particular planned route here, which I'm going, which is the comfortable route for me. And um, right earlier on, when you saw me fiddling on that computer where I unlocked the doors, there was two options. You don't have to go this way. I'm going. You had the choice to go for a different door. I choose to go this way because it's faster and this is more the efficient route. And I think. It tends to be the route most speedrun E types go as well. Um, because the if you go the other way, there's more locked doors there that just there's I there, there's locked doors that just, it, there's not much really to get out of going that way at this stage, apart from if you just wanna, you know, eradicate some of the zombies in that direction. And that's the thing about these old games is uh, certainly yeah, definitely Resident Evil 2, maybe not so much Resident Evil 3, which I discovered from replaying that, but once the enemies are dead, they're dead. They don't come back, they don't respawn or anything like that, so you know, if you if you want to have a play at stage play through, like say, just kill everything, um, skip everything, obviously in that city escape um, section at the beginning, um, and um, you know, you kill everything, and then you, you you get that kind of moment of peace and calm, <laughs> not being bothered by any zombies. Of course, what you will see is things will um, pop up new enemies or pop up in areas that were once quiet before, but uh, you know. We'll, we'll see that as we go along. Of course, there's the uh, the, the the big boxes. Uh, the the, the un well, not, they're not really unlimited, are they? They do have limited space. But I've never had a play the Resident Evil game where I've uh, managed to max out the um, space of the the boxes, which basically hold your items that you need to stash for a bit. Um, generally, I like to. Especially in these early segments of the game, I like to play it risky. I don't carry any health items. I'll just literally carry the handgun and the and, the, and a bit of ammo, of course, just in case. Um, I know where most of the health items are, so and I'm kind of aware that there there is help around the corner if I need it. So I, I don't think I'm posing a huge risk, really. Or although maybe it seems that way, but. Um, yeah, we've got the key. Um, this is the first key, I think. Um, what you can do, you can do the same thing that you do in the original Resident Evil, where you can examine the key, because at the moment it's just called the precinct key, and if you look at it, I think it calls it the probably the club key or something. It was one, it's one of the, um, the card shapes, and it will change it from the precinct key to that designated key. It said just then I used the precinct key, but if you do that, then the text will change to what shape it is. Um, so, I think, it's the, I think I've got the spade key at the moment. Um, so, but yeah, that's just a little, kind of like a little thing you can do, it's not, you don't have to do it. Uh, but the examin examining items in Resident Evil 2 really falls by the wayside. They don't do the neat thing in the first game, you know, where you can rotate the items. You can't kind of move them around and examine them, which I always found was really cool, actually, in the first game. They brought that back a lot later. I think I think it was Resident Evil Code Veronica that was the big revival of that idea, you know, where you look at the item and then something's hidden on it, and then it you know, gives you another item, but they completely um, ditched that in this game. They do bring it back in Resident Evil 3, but kind of in a boring way, it just gives you like a still image where you have to examine an item to get another item, but you just look at it and it's like, oh, oh here it is, here's that thing. But yeah, I've, yeah I've dropped, I stopped off in that little cupboard just there just to get the crank, which we're going to need for a lot later. So a lot of kind of like this early bit here is me you know, picking up things that I'm not going to need straight away. Then I'm getting stuck around the corner there for some reason. That's, <laughs> this is, of course, the Resident Evil series that uses tank controls. <laughs> oh, and I've, this is probably a good point to mention that this is where I, um, I'm using a game control, which I did a picture on Discord of um, the people who laughed at me already about my little thumb injury. I play Resident Evil games with the D-pad. I'm not. I think that picture might have given the wrong impression. Yeah, that thumbstick is completely just horrible. <laughs> it looks it looks disastrous. Although it's still functional, I should say it works fine. Actually, it's just the plastic has kind of worn off over time. Um, but the D-pads on GameCube controllers. This is kind of all GameCube controllers are tiny. They look like they're just not designed for small children. <laughs> but I know that being said, you know, um, I, I I kind of have the same issue with the. Um, 
Switch control uh, Joy Cons, I guess. At least if I'm using one of them by itself, <laughs> not so much, not so much of a problem if they're on the side of the Switch, but definitely individually I struggle with. But that um, that D-pad on that my third party Game controller really, ooh, it, it it did a number on my thumb, and um, this is this is complete playthrough with no breaks as well, by the way. So yeah, that redness was cranking itself. <laughs> So we saw, I saw our first image of young Sherry there, who mostly just spent the game running away from Claire. And, and we'll, we'll see for good reason why later with uh, one of the voices she puts on. <laughs> but, um, and of course we beat up with Leon again. Here is Leon, just Leon. casually walking by, um, looking a bit looking a bit sad, I guess. It's hard Claire, to say with, with their static it. faces here at this yeah. stage, but... Uh, this scene particularly does show you that the, the GameCube version looking a lot better than the PlayStation yeah, version. The... Um, textures on Claire's legs have definitely more detail and well and Eon's legs don't matter. Both both fine Leon, pairs of legs you've got there guys, but you go and more detail on their character models. Um, it's also it's quite amusing that we're playing a GameCube game where characters don't blink or move their mouth. But, uh, it shows how far we come within the generation gap though, how you know you know we play with, from PlayStation to uh, to PlayStation 2 that there was a big jump and a big leap really. <laughs> Never felt like we had that big leap from you know 360 to Xbox One, but hey, you know, maybe we just added more enemies on screen, right? Of course, Claire's got, Claire's got a lockpick. I should have mentioned that too. Um, so Claire is Jill, basically. She is the master of unlocking um, in this game, and so it, it does make things a lot easier. Where you're gonna kind of you can you can unlock the um, the occasional side chest or something to get an item, um, which I think I did have pretty much every possible opportunity in this game. Uh, Leon is like Chris where he has to find the little keys, but unlike Chris, Leon has eight slots this time and not six slots, you know, he has more pockets, even though, because <laughs> Chris needs those pockets for his cigarettes, that's why he can't stash more things in that green jacket that he has. <laughs> well, I'm just taking a drink there. Right, uh, so here's the library section, and this is a good. I've, I mentioned this to a friend as well. The um, th this library puzzle is pretty very straightforward. What you got to do is just match that how the the shelves appear to how the shelves appear on the um, that little picture you just saw just then. Fairly straightforward, and then you pick up uh, your first. This is kind of like the first key item, which I'm going to need later to essentially escape the police station. Um, so being quite yeah. Then again, I say I say these puzzles are straightforward now, but. It would be fascinating now to go back and re like try and play through these games blindly and not know because I make it look easy because you know I play uh, I play these games so many times and you know I played it back in the day because I think the first time I played for I probably was fiddling around you know like right left right left and trying to get things protected but once you know the puzzle it sort of stays ingrained and you just don't forget it really. Um, although that being said, it's not for every Resident Evil game. I think there's some games Code Veronica which I replayed not too long ago. Um, I played the HD version on PlayStation 3, um, which pff, the HD are quite debatable, but pff, just seems just seems the same to me. But then again, you know, I'm the guy that doesn't notice much with graphics, I guess. I just maybe it's my eyesight, <laughs> get my eyes tested or something. Um, but anyway, point is, is there's some more complex puzzles there, and I, you know, I'm not shy away from just getting up a quick, a quick solution off the internet and <laughs> figuring it out. Just, um, I have, a, I've, obviously, I think I have originally played through sort of every Resident Evil game without walkthroughs at some stage. Silent Hill, to me, was the one that had the more complex puzzles, but certainly what's interesting in Silent Hill is, I don't know if you guys remember that most of the, the later games at least, uh, Resident Evil, not Silent Hill 2 and 3 at least, uh, they let you choose the difficulty of the puzzles, which is kind of neat. Um, but yeah, again, these puzzles, it depends on your definition of puzzles, I guess, because really, I guess it's most puzzles in these games are just putting items in the right places and shifting things in the right orders. Um, certainly, Resident Evil 2 is really just putting items in where you need to put them. So we go back to the item box, let's take out, what do we need to take out? I think I'm going to stash the red herb there. Stash the key item, I'm not going to need it right now. And I'm going to stash, of course, the fire rounds. The fire rounds I'm barely going to use in this playthrough, which is kind of silly of me really. Um, I have a set sort of route through this game and, and definitely when I'm replaying this I know I can see myself because it's rare I take that this opportunity to actually <laughs> kind of watch what I'm doing actually and uh, view how I'm playing the game but you know I, it'll, be, it'll be fun definitely later I'm gonna be poking probably more fun at myself for things I could have done better or ammo that I could have used if I wanted to. <laughs> um, 
But I still I still play this far too survival horror where I stash mode. I, I only use the ammo if I really need to use it. Um, so that's why you'll see that I literally cling on to the pistol for this first segment of the game. Um, but, and then later on I'll completely just ditch the pistol and just stick with the um, the grenade launcher, which uh, with its multiple ammo types. The it as I said, the bow gun is is just god awful the bow gun it is terrible it basically what it does in resident evil 2 is it fires three shots and um, and um, per uh, the row and they, they, two of them go diagonally and one just goes straight ahead so essentially <laughs> you're wasting a shot you, you need to get very very close to the enemies and from what i'm what i see i think the only enemy it appears to be effective against is the is the, is the liquor i've got a hunter again um they seem the bow gun tends to be pretty rubbish against zombies i've i found um i could be i I could be proved wrong, but certainly from my my past experiences, I've honestly never really tried using it because the few experiences I've tried using it, um, it's just awful. <laughs> it's just terrible. There's not really a lot of ammo for the bow gun in this game as well. They, they'll bring the bow gun back, don't you worry. And um, the bow gun is gonna is gonna feature in this series <laughs> for, for years to come. Although they sensibly ditched it in um, Resident Evil 3. Thank God. Um, but yeah, maybe it's just a thing with Claire. They they brought the bow gun back for Claire in the uh, in Code Veronica, and um, they thought, oh, we'll just make it fire one arrow at a time, and it'll still be useless. <laughs> at least it's slightly more useless and it's uh, slightly more useful in Code Veronica the bow gun because you can put explosive arrow rounds, which are useful, but the individual arrow shots are just rubbish. I don't know. Maybe it's because. But then again, maybe we should be maybe we should say yeah, it kind of makes sense. You know, shooting an arrow at a dead person isn't going to stop it. <laughs> But, I don't know. But then again, this is, you know, why aren't they aiming for the head each time with the pistol? Uh, it's all good fun. We like to poke fun at old games and um, old cliches. So, I've got these two... Well, I think I only have one gem in my inventory at the moment. But what I'm kind of working towards is I need to get two gems to obtain another key um, later on. So, um, Claire Leon actually starts with the lighter. So, that puzzle there, all that, yeah, where you can just, um, if you look at the picture, it says something about burning, and you yeah, basically just got to burn the picture. So, not burn the picture, you got to um, just make, if you ever see a fireplace in a Resident Evil game, basically set light to it, because that will usually <laughs> that'll help you progress. Um, and that, that is a thing I believe is in every game, every, all the first three games, I believe you do, um, um, you, you do light up a fireplace <laughs> each time. So Leon has the lighter to begin with, and I think Chris has a lighter as, as his like you know sub a sub item that's like permanently there. Um, so you could just do that that puzzle straight away when you first run through the game. Uh, whereas obviously Claire only has the, the lockpick. They'll they'll it's interesting they they actually kind of ditch the sort of special items or that, that each character has in Resident Evil 3 where Jill doesn't have them. They do don't get don't don't you worry the lockpick is still there and the lighter is still there in those games, but they um. They now become sort of main items that you have to cling on to. Um, the lighter I will need to use for, for Claire in one other section later in this game, but I'm probably going to stash it now. Um, probably a moment just to you know, enjoy the soundtrack here. This is, to me, this is quite an iconic soundtrack for the you know, the main hall of the police station. You know, very sort of ominous, like what's happening, and you can still hear that zombie lunging in the background there because I left him and ran past him. We don't need to bother him; he's he's just hanging out. And this is where I, this I might have, this is one of those moments where I think I might think, do I have yeah I do have both of the gems, so I don't need to worry about that. So I don't I think that's one play for idea where I forgot to take all the gems out of an item box, which is commonplace to me. You know, I I just forget. <laughs> For some reason I think I'm, I'm I'm shooting the gun a bit too quickly there. I think I need to go do the gem bit first, but no, there's a fire. Basically, there's a fire around there. There's a um, as you'll see in a second, a helicopter um, has basically crashed into the side of the building and it's um, everything's on fire, so we can't enter that section. And no, for some reason I don't unlock that door. That door is locked, um, which helps you. It's a shortcut to go back downstairs again, which is for that other. Um, which is useful for later, but for some reason I don't unlock it there, but I just I'll just keep it later. Usually I do. <laughs> That's obviously the little crow section. Uh yeah, just run from crows. Don't don't you know, don't shoot crows, don't do just don't waste your time. <laughs> just don't 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 deal with that drama. There's too many of them and they're they are a right pain in the ass, but but so just run from crows. 
I think that's the temptation with these old Resident Evil games is that when an enemy gets you, like a resident or like a zombie grabs you or something, the temptation is to seek revenge on them. So, but in some instances, it's it's just better to run away. I think I just um, run past all of these zombies in this section, so I don't know. I just leave them to it, just to you know hang out. Yeah, there because once we go through this bit, we're basically going to get a valve. Um, you know, <laughs> valve puzzles, right? <laughs> And uh, you're getting a valve and uh, another bow gun because it's like, cause obviously you have to. Just, you, you might not actually get that gun from the from the gun owner, so this is you, you do get a second opportunity to pick up the weapon again later. So for reasons I don't really know, I pick up the bow gun again. I don't think I ever use that one. I might do. Um, I think. Oh no, I do, don't I? Because I use it. There's a, there's a there's one there's one more instance of me using the bow gun later. So yeah, basically, just so we don't need to come back here off this. Um, interesting note though, this section that we're seeing here is sort of the beginning of scenario B. This is where the second character will enter the police station through this route, and you'll also see how the um, the helicopter <laughs> um, and and ends up in the position that it's in, basically how it ends up there. But. And right now, though, it remains a mystery. You know, we, 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 if you played through this first time, maybe you're questioning. Maybe you're thinking, well, how did that helicopter enter there? I don't think I ever did question it the first time I played through the game. It's like, yeah, well, it's a zombie, a couple of Of course, there's a crash helicopter somewhere. <laughs> yeah, so, bait, yeah. So, turn the valve. Let's, let's, let's put out that fire. And if you um, look into the helicopter there is some ammo there which I think I did go pick up so it's worth worth grabbing that for some more pistol ammo take out those zombies there is a section coming up very soon where there's gonna be a loot of zombies in one corridor um, it's a particular section yeah I'll talk about it when we get to it there's no point if I, if I remember of course but <laughs> so let's go back through let's go um, run past the crows and um, I think this might be the only, I think it's just, this is the only section with the crows in Resident Evil 2, which is interesting, so you never see them again. There's um, a port of Resident Evil, for the original Resident Evil, for the DS, which I've really kind of come to really fall in love with, uh, as the guy that is digging, digs the portable stuff. Um, but it does have this mode called Rebirth Mode, which I despise, because it basically, it, what it tries to do is it tries to kind of reinvent the wheel a bit, where uh, Resident Evil, uh, at least the, I guess, maybe, I, maybe I'm a purist, I guess, but the general formula is that enemies don't tend to appear, or different enemy types don't tend to appear in the same room together, so like you won't see a liquor and a hunter in the same room, although that slightly does change in Nemesis, but not in these really old games, certainly the original Resident Evil, but in Rebirth mode they do love to throw in a, a crow with a batch of zombies and those crow enemies are are just horrific because if they get if they get you basically, they do this annoying animation that sort of distracts your character while and during that period a zombie is just going to rub to you and just eat you. <laughs> so so I, I'm not a big fan of Rebirth mode. Um, and there's, a, there's a familiar screen that we appear in almost every movie. <laughs> But, but it's, it, I'm not against it because, of course, it lets you choose classic mode. You might just choose classic mode every time because I'm a dinosaur. <laughs> I can't evolve. I can't, can't accept change with these games. Stop messing with my old formula. So, yeah. So this is quite straightforward. Yeah, you just put put the gems on the um, put the gems on the statues, and we obtain our second key. What I love, though, is of course we get a um, another another cutscene. So they did give us a cutscene when we got the first key as well. I don't think we get any more cutscenes for the keys though. Oh, it's not even the key, it's a special item. <laughs> the key's just there, the key's on the side. So, this is a special key item that we're gonna need later. It's, it's, only, it's only part of it, because they still do the combining feature. On that note, actually, of combining, I just remembered that you might have seen me do this already, that um, you'll certainly see me do it a lot in a section, in a, in a moment, where you can, the most effective thing to do with reloading is to simply go to your menu and um, combine ammo to your gun. Um, or to, otherwise, what will happen is when Claire runs out of bullets, she'll just she'll do an animation where she reloads. That basically wastes your time, especially if you're in a room that's literally flooded with enemies. So your best strategy is go into the menu quickly. Um, the game is obviously paused while you're doing that anyway. Combine the ammo to the gun, and then automatically the gun is now reloaded, and it just it just can help you in some pretty annoying situations because <laughs> um, those um, reload animations are are can bite you pun intended <laughs> in the past but 
Pro, pro tip, right? That's a pro tip from Resident Evil Pro right here. So, um, now I'm going back to the... So this technically, the area I'm going to now... I don't know why I'm picking up that herb. I can't even... I've got room for it. <laughs> the... Uh, the, the, this is the kind of the back route that we never went to, which was unlocked a lot earlier. But I'm just going the back way. Be, of course, the the top floor is inaccessible because it's locked. Because um, as it said earlier, the door is now unlocked. It's, it would just say it's locked from the other side. So yeah, here we are with another section. Um, quite a few zombies in here. These ones you kind of can avoid. Uh, there's one down the kind of the right hand side that you'll sort briefly. It's lying on the floor that. If you just go that route, you can probably avoid all of these zombies, but I'm kind of going in to shoot up a few of them because I'm going to... Um, there's a safe in here that I'm going to get into because it's got some grenade rounds, I, I, which I, I don't know if I get it now. Or, well, I won't be able to get it now, but I think I'll go back for it later. Um, so yeah, I'm going back. This is like the safe route I'm running past. So there's that. As you can see, I love I love this little animation he does where his head is little just twisting now and then. It just, just shows you that he's just hanging out there. He's still alive. Just, Okay, so this bit is, this is where that combined skill comes in. As you can see me do it here, I'm combining the ammo to the gun, because there is a lot of zombies here. Um, very, very much more talented people than me at this game do run past all of these zombies, but I am just one person just to kill all of them. Um, with Leon, your better bet is just to get the shotgun, let them come really close, point that shotgun to the skies and click because then you'll just blast their heads off and possibly if you're lucky you'll get one or two or three of them in one go and that will save you a lot of time uh, but I, I'm just I'm not great with the dodging with Resident Evil Online yeah I don't mind I'm, I'm happy where I am there's me combining the ammo again oh and I, I didn't know that guy was dead so I'm gonna kick his head off so <laughs> so oh, and I've got the SEC I've got uh, I'm, I'm, I'm injured I'm injured now <laughs> so I got duped twice then. So uh, pro tip for myself is that blood stains around zombies means they're actually dead. Uh, you can do the thing which you know I think was I think it was made famous by that Zombieland movie, um, the the double tap skill I guess where if you're not sure, paint your gun at the floor and and, uh, and then fire it. And if a blood stain cut, if the dot of a, if the zombie's still twitching, it's still alive. So, make sure, so keep shooting until it's dead. Otherwise you'll get an instance of that where they'll just nibble on your feet for a while. So I think I'm going back now uh, to, there's one of, yeah, we're going to go back to that, yeah, that injured police officer we saw, whose name I keep forgetting, um, you know, he is, um, I don't think, yeah, he is, he's in Resident Evil 3, but unconscious, and he's also in Resident Evil Outbreak, I believe, uh, a game I really need to probably go back and play for, that might make a fun retro game, like, that's a Resident Evil game I'm very ill-experienced at, I, I have, um, played around with the, the first Outbreak, but I, I just really struggle to get into Outbreak, really, because I, I, I would love it, though, if that game was, you know, especially now, I feel it was kind of ahead of its time in terms of the online functionality. Um, and I say as this is someone in Europe where we got the non-online version of the game. <laughs> the second game was um, did feature online, but the first one didn't. So we only basically got essentially a offline version of Outbreak, a game that clearly was designed to be an online copy game. So I, I would love I thought if that game was re-released, say on for the say 360 arcade, and hell, I would be all for it being re-released now. You know, um, if I don't, come on, Capcom, this was get, get off your backside and do it. But it's uh, I just I just think it's the online stuff didn't really boom till Xbox Live, in my opinion, especially on 360. You know, the audiences were still kind of gradually growing, but I could see it being quite quite good now. And I say this as someone that's gone back and played games like Resident Evil, um, Operation Raccoon City and um, Lost Planet 2 um, on PlayStation 3, which still have communities on them. They still have people that are playing those games. Games that are pretty old. They must be over 10 years as well. Operation Raccoon City might not be. Um, so here I am with the grenade launcher. I, get, I use this deliberately because these zombies can just wreck your day. There's one that comes from the left there. As you see, he's just sneaking. And I just don't have time to, you know, it's it's quite stressful. You could die quite quickly and get a little bit overwhelmed a bit quickly. So yeah, just get your get your good gun out. So for Claire, get the grenade launcher. If it's Leon, you, you're going to use a shotgun basically. Um, this is the first part of the detonator. 
I'll go back to online stuff in just a moment, actually, because this is this is a fun section we're coming to uh, now, where we're gonna um, re re meet with our police officer who's been injured and uh, and who's totally not gonna turn into a zombie. <laughs> so, <laughs> in case you didn't predict that was gonna be a thing that happened, um, yep. So we're going through here. Guy's got his head. So he's he's had a nice chunk out of that guy. And he's going to stand up, and we're going to get quite a satisfying transformation scene, actually. This was pretty cool for the time, uh, to see him fade into that, just like, form into that zombie. Unfortunately for me, he does get me, because if you... You have to be damn quick in this game to, to, not, get, to not get got, really. Um, because he's very fast, and he does a lot more damage than the average zombie. He does... He takes chunks out of you. So, you <laughs> Um, so yeah, basically, if you're going in with Leon, have the shotgun equipped. If you've got Claire, have the grenade launcher pre-equipped. And if you're fast enough, um, yeah, just basically shoot him down as quickly as possible. Um, I don't. I think it's nigh impossible to run away from him, and he does lunge at you, from what I remember. I've tried. To, I think I've tried to do that in the past. Again, I could be wrong. Maybe people are more skilled people than me have managed to run away from him. But I think he's one you really do need to attack him. Go on the attack. So. We've got all the parts for the explosives and the detonators, so now we can essentially clear the um, the wreckage. And up in I've, I've picked up the bow gun ammo for some reason. I don't know why, but <laughs> which I don't think I'm ever going to use. But yeah, I'll stash it in my in my treasure trove. I put on. <laughs> Yeah, I, I like my loot. So you see, see, Resident Evil was doing loot before it was cool. <laughs> so so we're going to let's go stash some of those items. Um, I think I'm stashing, so, yeah, stashing grenade launch as well. I think I'm just trying to, because it's it, when you kind of know things are safe, um, you want to just just go go with pistol alone and leave as many gaps as possible. Because there's so many items to pick up, key items, and it. I think I've done quite well in this playthrough where I've never had to really do one of those typical things with a Resident Evil game where you have to go back to an item box to clear more space to go back to a room to pick up an item that you need to pick up earlier. I think I'm pretty good with this in this playthrough where I've already kind of preemptively done it. Um, and with, with the handy thing is if you're desperate to free up space you can use like a healing item if you have one in your inventory. I mean they are, at least in the police station, they're pretty nicely scattered about. It depends how well you're playing through the game. You know, if you're you know, for a first time, if you're running through those healing items, maybe stash them when you need them. But if you're desperate, you can use a healing item even when you're on fine. Um, so obviously, I'm picking up the healing item there because I'm going to pick up a red herb soon. And yeah, the herbs are quite, uh, yeah, for the original <laughs> Resident Evil games, up to, I think, Code Veronica, you can do the infamous combining, where you can combine herbs to make them more effective. So... Uh, one green herb is just standard health, really, but if you combine two, it's more effective. Three is the most effective, it'll fill up completely. Um, one green herb combined with a red will be the same effect as three green herbs, basically. So that's the best, you know, and the most efficient combination. Blue herb will heal poison, so that's quite useful for later. In fact, there's only one enemy, maybe two, um, which is the spiders and possibly the moths. I know the moths are poisonous in Code Veronica, but I don't think they are in this game. Oh no, there's, there's, sorry, possibly three, because there are the plants in this game, which we will see those later. <laughs> which have some long name, like the TN something or other, the whatever. <laughs> some, the plant, they're plants, living plants. Um, they can poison you too. So the best combination basically is one is one green, one red, one blue. It will give you basically the the, the same effect essentially as a health spray, which will, will heal you completely and um, cure any poison effects. Um, but so yeah, that's right. So I've done that little combination just there, and we're gonna go in for a. No, I'm in. I'm in your room. We're gonna come up to a jump scare moment in a second, which. Um... <laughs> But before we do that, we're just going to pick up some pistol ammo. I'm replaying this, but I don't know why I even bother going to this room. So there's really not much here. It's just if you need to get some more ammo. Of course, for a first time, absolutely go in here. Go grab that ammo and, you know, stash it. But we're going to go backwards and, um... Yeah, so I think I get rid of it now. Yes, yeah, so there's a thing, a little note to touch on there, is it's very handy to, when it to use the keys when possible because once you've used the keys in every lock that they need to be used then it'll give you the option to discard them which of course frees up another important space in your item inventory so uh picking up another key item just here so we're nearly there we only actually need one more which is the other half of the blue stone and there's a liquor that jumps through the window and the best thing to do here is just run past him now the thing about that is that that liquor particularly 
is if I didn't go in that other room before which had the handgun ammo, if you run past the liquor, and even if you kill him I believe, another liquor is in the other room, so <laughs> it's best to go in that other room first before you go into the room that's locked by the with the diamond key basically. So now we're I, now we're gonna head back to the the, the crash the helicopter crashy area. Um, clear the doorway basically with the detonator and everything. And uh, we're gonna have a bit more plots. How far are we getting through? I don't think we're halfway through yet, because I think this um I think we're we're looking at two hour mark, but so yeah, I think I think I take out this guy now. So that, so I left a lot of these zombies, didn't I? Oh, and there's also we're gonna you know, we're gonna open up the safe as well, aren't we? And I get got here. So we'll go back to the safe bit just here. So safe round. Obviously, be careful with him, um, little Larry, who's um, on the floor there, because he <laughs> he will take a chunk out of you. At least if he does, then you'll kick his head off. Um, so I know this safe key combination off the top of my head. It's two two three six, but you do find the um, combination to the safe on a piece of paper um, in the game. I think it's upstairs. Uh, which tells you, and it is useful because the chemical rounds, um, the grenade rounds, particularly for Claire, are very handy against um, the boss characters in this game, and that's kind of what I saved them deliberately for. Um, the they're also the, the grenade's an interesting gun actually in Resident, in Resident Evil 2 because the the standard kind of grenade launcher sort of rounds they kind of do like a spread effect, a bit like the bow gun, but not as kind of bollocks but <laughs> and, and it's ineffective it's still you have to be kind of close for them to be useful because it, it i think it does like four like close close up shots essentially so they're really good against like liquors if they're up up in your face and they're very good with zombies when they're up in your face as well uh, but you don't want to use those standard grenade rounds for long shots the flame rounds and the chemical rounds are one shot a piece but they go they travel quite far so they're very useful. The flame rounds particularly are useful for anything that may be plant-like, <laughs> with the emphasis on plants. <laughs> and, um, but the chemical rounds are basically good against um, bio weapons, I guess. So you know, like the liquors and uh, definitely the the, ver the bosses that we're going to encounter in this games. Um, but we're going to see all that later. So yeah, here we are. Here we are at the um, the helicopter. Right, let me just rearrange myself a bit. Ugh. And we're gonna we're gonna clear the path and see what all that screaming was about. <laughs> it seems like it was a while ago now, doesn't it? Yeah. But obviously, we wanna go stash some stuff first. I mean, that wire the wiring is interesting actually, because the wiring um, may or may not. I don't, it's, I don't know if it's useful or not. What is what you can use? You got a choice with the wiring. You got you got two choices to use it on um, area basically. Um, shutters in the game there's two opportunities and it gives you a choice because what Resident Evil 2 does tries to do occasionally is it tries to make your choices in this playthrough affect scenario B but they're quite minimal I'll highlight them when they come up but basically one of them is that you can put shutters on the windows and it will stop basically more zombies spawning um, later and I think for scenario for yourself in this scenario and for um, scenario B but I certainly definitely remember that they they do just spawn anyway late uh, regardless of what choice you make. The other uh, most notable which I'm actually going to skip in this game but I'll let I'll remind you of it when it comes up is there's a you come across a locker and the character the text clearly tells you that oh you may want to leave this for Leon. It gives you two item choices. One of them is that you could expand your items from your item slots from 8 to 10 um, which is very useful uh, and the other is a like a new a machine gun which takes up two item slots. Um, my general strategy is I leave both for scenario B um, because scenario B is a bit more action heavy particularly with a enemy that um, stalks you that's not nemesis <laughs> so it comes quite quite handy for oh, that um, and of course like, the items I just think is better I'm it's probably because I've played scenario A so much that I, I know that I don't need to have the 10 slots in this first run through maybe it's more beneficial I don't know but, so I leave both for that but the game kind of encourages you can actually take both items for scenario A if you want just to, um, so you can be greedy and just take both. And uh, when I very, very first place go for, why am I leaving this for Leon? Because I didn't have any concept of scenario B, so most people would take both. <laughs> you know, you're trying to survive this damn zombie apocalypse, but then that means that poor old Leon has nothing to collect. <laughs> uh, so we're this is Chief Irons, who is um, 
He's the police chief, of course. Uh, which, God, of course it is. <laughs> I said that. And he's uh, just murdered the mayor's daughter, of course, because she was going to turn zombie. But, you know, yeah, it murdered her by doing something. It looks like he's taken a chunk out of her from the abdomen. I don't know. but Because he talks very vividly here about putting a bullet to the head. Just there. <laughs> but, you know, I don't see no bullets to the head there, Chief Irons. It just, just looks like someone's taken a chunk out of her. Unless, you know, maybe she was bitten or something, you know. We don't know the full story of the mayor's daughter. But yeah, Chief Irons essentially is, um, he's corrupt as police chiefs are in video games and movies and anything fictitious. <laughs> and, and he just basically just wants to be left alone, like, um, <laughs> I like both video game generic characters. <laughs> so we continue our quest to um, to admire the taxidermy in um, Chief Irons' massive office. And of course, um, hunt for Sherry, of course. So that's kind of what we're doing here. We do need, a, there's another, actually, no, I don't think there's an item here. You do need to kind of find Sherry to trigger off something. So hearing a few footsteps here. But uh, to stop, because she, she, what's going to happen is that the, enough cutscene is going to play in just a moment, and um, I get a bit delayed here, I think, because I took the light on, they just stopped there. But then I realise you have to move into the corner to acknowledge that Sherry is there. So you see, I'm just standing still for a bit. I'm thinking, huh? Why is the cutscene not triggering? Oh, that's why. I actually need to move because yeah, you can't. <laughs> Claire can't just see her Wait. in the corner. Let me go. Easy, easy so there. I'm Claire not reinforcing a that she's not a zombie. You're safe now. <laughs> But when it's completely justified that a young child would run away from a stranger. <laughs> so, especially in biker gear. Leon, but, I found so yeah, as I was saying here, so Claire, um, the Leon gave Claire a radio earlier, so um, they'll every now and then she'll pick up that radio to tell Claire, uh, to tell Leon, bloody hell, I'm getting the two mixed up, uh, to inform what's going down. And when you play through Scenario B, you'll see the other end of those conversations. So you'll see um, Leon picking up that and uh, responding to Claire's. What's rather funny, actually, though, is that um, in the reverse, if you do Leon A and Claire B, Leon barely radios Claire. I think he does it once significantly, and that's it. <laughs> Which kind of even more reinforces the this this route, um, Claire A, Leon B being the canon playthrough, really, because it seems like it certainly has more, uh, more, more sort of parts to it. Um, certainly with the ending, because uh, well, Claire, basically Sherry gets infected, which we're going to see later, but Claire needs to find a cure, and that that whole story arc is absent if you do Leon A, Claire B, and it's just not it's present here. at all Sherry, but again like i said before i'm not against it I, li I like the fact that you do have the choice it's kind of cool you know this is a, a massive bang for your buck in terms of you know game playthroughs uh, definitely one of the bigger resident evil games of the earlier lot as well in terms of you know scenarios and replay replay bleh, replayability um so i just wanted to admire the armor then for some reason <laughs> why not <laughs> so yeah, so that, that's all that happened, so Sherry's been triggered, and now we're going to go... Yeah, yeah, so this is why you have to do that. You have to go that way, because then Chief Irons has disappeared, and handily left you a key, you know? Because it, it doesn't seem like he's really on your side, but he clearly wants you to live for at least a small portion of the game. <laughs> he won't seem that way later when we, we meet up with him again. So he's left me the heart key, basically. It's on the desk. Um... So he's gone into his secret lair, I guess. And this is why I pulled out those two key items later, is that this is what we're gonna this is what an ultimate we need to use them for and to escape the police station. There's several slots here. We put the slots into the appropriate holes, which is done automatically, we don't need to choose them. Um, and we've got one more left basically, which is the we've got the, the other half of that blue stone. And then when we get that, we'll it'll open up another area which we can enter uh, and help uh, basically essentially get get out of the police station and onto I guess the second half of the game really because I, I'd probably consider that the police station takes up at least a good half of the whole game experience um, but once, you, once you're done with the police station you, you're kind of done with backtracking as well because there's not a lot really in the, the last half the last far, half is kind of more quite forward moving uh, which is basically just a sewer and an underground lab, which is because it's a Resident Evil game, you know. <laughs> of course there's an underground lab. And it's also a Resident Evil game because of course there's a sewer somewhere. <laughs> I don't know, that might not be fair actually. I don't think... I mean, they're pretty prominent, aren't they? you got sewers in 2, you got them in 3, definitely. you got them in 
I don't think I haven't been four actually. Definitely haven't been five. I do remember some prominent sewer time in five. Um, oh, and they're definitely in six. Oh, I do remember the sewer section in six. So yeah, sewers are a Resident Evil thing for sure. So yeah, pick up the rest of those health items because yeah, they'll probably come in handy. And um, we're hunting for Sherry. Yeah, yeah. How is she, she's a she's a wriggly little child. You go know, getting through all those locked doors. That I can't enter. Yeah, that's a piece of key. So that, and that that's just a one use key, really. You don't need to see any you need to use it for that one door. So this uh this worth pointing out here actually, this sex this room, so you see there's the broken windows. It's a bit like that room, uh, one of the earlier ones, where we first where we actually first encountered the liquor, and there's a box just there. I'm gonna use the wiring here um to close the shutters basically. And this will basically prevent more zombies entering the building for me. It's I kind of question how effective it is though, and if it, if you ever ever really need to bother, I think if you're a speedrunner, you never need to bother with it. But it's kind of neat to see, from a design perspective, I guess, of the developers sort of trying to give that impression that you're having an impact on like a different playthrough. Um, and so this is the, at least for me, this is like a, a common dog issue <laughs> area. Basically, that that corridor splits off into like a you know like a T shape. There's two more dogs. There's three dogs total. The the first dog is is happy to come and chew on your leg, but the other two are like stuck in a loop basically, and they won't come and get you until you walk up to the top of that corridor. So I always get a bit conflicted of how to go about doing this. I try to be clever in this playthrough, and actually I do something I don't usually do. Usually I just back up to the other corridor. And, um, and wait for them both to come after me um, after I've kind of made my presence aware. But this time I thought I'd be smart, run past or go to the end of this corridor and take them out. Just because I quite like to be able to see the enemies I'm shooting at. It's always a bit annoying to shoot the enemies off screen. Um, if you are going to do the whole off screen shooting, listen for the cue. So the kind of technique here you're going for is when you hear the dog growl, shoot. Um, because they're not, it's not very easy to shoot them when they're on the floor, not least to up close and personal. And those dogs can be really fiddly. Um, so, yeah, ba basically when they, they get up, they growl, then you know you're safe to shoot them, essentially. And, um, yeah, and carry on, of course. Uh, and then once you hear the, the, the horrible dog yelp, then you know you've taken it down. Uh, there's two more dogs here. I do, yeah, I mentioned this right earlier because I played through, just before this playthrough actually, I was in, I've gone through about an hour of the game and died. And I'm going to highlight that. I'm, I'm not ashamed to admit where I died. We're coming up to that bit quite soon actually as well. Um, and um, where I, 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 I basically, I play it a little bit safe in this section deliberately for that reason. Um, so we've got, we're just going to the save room just here, uh, item box. So this is interesting, this bit here, because you basically don't need to, you don't really need to do anything. All you need to do is just go out of the room, and then um, Sherry appears, basically handily. <laughs> so wait, wait to advance the plot. So your stash got way too many healing items, but I do I do believe um what I usually do is I usually wouldn't have any. I would usually just be it, play it very very bold and brave, and uh, just but I am actually carrying health by side because of the mishap that happened on the previous playthrough. I've also packed that bow gun as you notice because I'm going to be using that um one <laughs> only one more time later. And here's Sherry. Sherry. So the reason I remember I highlighted earlier that Claire's a little bit creepy. Uh, there's a nice little line here that Claire comes out with saying, uh, which she's gonna say something about, "What you don't trust me?" And it comes across this very sort of like, "No, because you're a stranger, Claire." Here we go. I'll just let, let's see what highlights it here. What's the matter? What's the matter? He he he! Don't you trust me? But of course, Sherry apparently is not bothered by Creepy Claire. In. She's she's more worried about her daddy. So, um, daddy must have been attacked by the monsters. So Sherry, of course, um, runs off by her little lonesome. Yeah, she's she's pretty badass, isn't she, Sherry? Balls of steel for a young young Wait, kitty. Sherry, don't go and um, alone. now, unfortunately, we play as Sherry. Sherry. And now, don't, don't get me wrong. This is not a bad design choice. It's quite, it's very vulnerable because Sherry is not as if she's not doesn't run as effectively as any of the other characters. She's very slow, even with the run button held down. But she has no weapons or defense against her. And this so with scenario A, you have to run away from dogs, <laughs> which makes things a little bit tricky and kind of scary actually. Um, as you'll see, I will get got a few times. Um, 
I've already spoiled that we survived this, so I've kind of lost all the tension on you, haven't I? But <laughs> and no, it wasn't this where I died either. I didn't die. I've never actually died of Sherry yet. I don't know. If he, I don't know. I think it is possible because uh, I, I, she definitely loses some health when I do this playthrough. Fortunately, you do have a health spray with her, which I do use. Um, I deliberately go this way because I want to go pick up Claire some uh, grenade rounds. But and basically, when you do this little section where you play as the alternate character. Um, no surprises with Leon, it's Ada who basically does these run-throughs and has a gun <laughs> that you can use but so you can defend yourself. But Sherry of course has nothing but you can, with both characters you can pick up some ammo for the other character. You can leave it and but the main obviously goal is to get the key or the club key uh, which is the last key for the police seg section. And I yeah I get, I get uh, bitten up a lot here um, but fortunately the, those two dogs are the only um, issue really with this uh, with Sherry and but once I've done that bit it's quite going back is easier than going to because I had to go through that little bend in the path to get the ammo which I do want because the the grenade um, rounds are useful uh, at least to I feel it's something I need although looking back on the playthrough maybe it's something I didn't need because I end up with loads of ammo at the end um, so you know here it is again block block puzzles yay push blocks and stuff it's quite straightforward this one uh, basically what you got to do is you've got to push the blocks to form a kind of like a bridge um, so that Sherry can get across so you raise the water level and that's it you know if we if this is a speed running marathon this is where we say well oh, read out the donations now because this bit's boring and uh, yeah that, is is Sherry's a she's she's a cute little nipper that she bless her heart she tries so hard to go kind of struggling to get up on those boxes and I, I do like that it is effective you know it, you do you do feel like you're playing as a, a weaker character should we say as opposed to when you do this section as Ada who is an adult character is much stronger and has no trouble pushing them them boxes and um, has no certainly has no trouble getting up on those <laughs> blocks but it, it, I, I like little small attentions to detail that you so you do feel like you're playing as a younger person um, as opposed to just a like a palette swap of a different character really um, so cool it's a cool idea um, you play as Sherry one last time in this playthrough and it's almost pointless because all you do is just run forward but well, we'll get to that part too which is pretty much that's the, that's the emphasis of this um, playthrough, this commentary is you'll, we'll, we'll get to that bit <laughs> we'll get there later so across the bridge we go um, of course, you know, it, I, I don't. I think, it's, I think it's fairly straightforward what you're supposed to. Do. I was gonna say, yeah, maybe it's a trial and error thing for some people. If you, 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 what you might do first is you might raise that water level first because it's one of the first things you see, and then you'll see that the blocks are not in the right places. Then you'll lower the water level and push them in the right places. So maybe because you kind of like that little hint. Um, I always felt that was kind of a straightforward kind of puzzle thing. So now we're just running past the dogs. I don't think I get um, a touched at all here. I think I'm completely fine. Yeah, it, look, it almost looks very scary then, though, the, the dog leaping behind me. So it almost, almost got, got. So. And then we found, we're going running back to Claire to throw items at her. Claire! Are you there? Sherry, are you okay? You it's really, it's interesting dad? that Claire just waits, though, you know. Yes, I'm Whereas, okay. you know, usually when Sherry but runs away, yeah, you're just him. exploring. Yeah, so she basically Jay will chuck the key in, but if you've got the other item, she'll say she's got another item. What I like, quite like here is that, you know, the great lounge look heavy. <laughs> she seems to have no trouble with a one arm swing with that. Why don't you come over here? I want you to stay with me. I love it how she just sort of casually explores it. You know, I know this is a video game and we can't, like, use logic by, I don't know, moving debris to get back into the hole or anything like that. She's just. Now nah, I'm gonna run back to where those scary dogs are. <laughs> and this is a Wait, common phrase you'll hear. Sherry, 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 where are you, Sherry? Now, um, this is interesting. This little bit just here is I, I actually uh, it doesn't it's not as bad here, but on most playthroughs I've really struggled to pick this damn key up. I don't know why. It's, it's got it's a really odd moment. Um. I don't know why I go back to the item box. I think I go to stash the grenade rounds. Um, so it's worth keeping a lot of um, spaces free for this next section because basically there's a few places we're going to be going into where we're going to be getting some more ammo and health items. So... 
No, I packed the grenade launcher. I guess, yeah, because uh, yeah, we're kind of playing it safe because of what happened. Um, okay, so let's talk about that then. So what I'm going to do first is I go back on myself and I get the... I take out those dogs that are going to appear in this alley. Um, most playthroughs, I would ignore the dogs. I would just leave them. But what happened on the previous playthrough is I did get attacked by them as I ran past them and I was moved into the yellow caution health zone uh, with... Probably, I don't, yeah, I said you probably have no health items, so I am playing it safe at this section. So, and then what happened after that is when we go back to the bit that we were just in, um, the, the kind of the corridors where the, the other dogs were, there is now two liquors that have spawned. <laughs> and what happened is that I, um, I rounded the corner, and one of the liquors had already done it, was basically doing a lunge attack. Like, um, I talked about like what the hunters do in the original game, where they kind of leap into the air and do a big slash at you, and those are deadly, those attacks, and um. I didn't realise it'd take as much health as it did, but it killed me. Basically, it essentially killed me in one hit. Um, so I must have been much more damaged than I assumed. So I've deliberately... I feel I've left him, actually. I, I, I took out one and I just ran away from the other. But I played it very safe this time because I was like, I I just want to get through a run of this without saving and not dying. <laughs> and So I play... And I, I, you can see right here, um, I am going to play it uber safe. I go forward and run and I just hide for a bit because I'm hoping that he'll come and... You know, kind of make his way up here and then um, both, both guns I know I've got the grenade launcher and you might sort of think well why not just use the grenade launcher it's like I said earlier is it's the grenade launcher is only really effective if he's really close up on me um, and to be honest I'd rather I'd rather just waste the bow gun so I take out this liquor first so he's gone and that's the guy that gave me trouble last time now what I do here is I you get the pistol I antagonize the other look so <laughs> that's that that's the lunge attack that they do so uh, the pistol is just really just to irritate him um, so I'm at, and then he's gone they're done and so is that bow gun so no ammo left in that so so that bit's done now so I, that that's kind of me breathing a sigh of relief but the, I definitely don't recommend using pistols on liquors because <laughs> it won't, won't end well. Definitely use it for long range. If you're in that situation where you want them to come closer to you, definitely use it. This bit's a bit of a fun section. This is, of course, the autopsy room because nothing bad's going to happen here. And this is why I think I practice grenade launcher. It's for, it's for safety because in case something went wrong, um, because you can quite easily die in here as well because essentially the room floods with zombies. But... With a little bit of rare skill, I actually got through this section, as you just see there, without encountering any of them. So I got I got very lucky there. Usually they, they get up quick so quickly that they one of them, one or two of them, will take a chunk out of you. But no, I was good this time. So I'm going into this room um, to do a little bit of a fiddle with some switches, basically, so I can unlock the armory and get some ammo. And the, the armory is essentially where you have that option, where you could... Um, take take a one or two items the, either the um, the extra space the side pack or the uh, the machine gun or you can leave them for the other character and i just leave them for leon for when we eventually play through i haven't played through scenario b yet um i said i was taking a break because of the <laughs> damage it did to my thumb <laughs> not just that i've also just been i've just been very busy i just haven't had a time um i'm one of those folks where uh, yeah you can't do it no to, uh, that, when you're doing a no save playthrough you do need to commit um I probably have about two hours to spare and um having gaming sessions with two hours to spare are quite uncommon for me at the moment um which is probably why i do warm to using get well playing games like um well if i do play games on the consoles i play stuff that's quick and easy or that you can save quite actively at um Whereas I'm I'm adoring systems like the Switch where I simply can just stand by everything. I can and everything's on standby mode, so I can stop whatever I'm doing to um, jump on the you know deal with emergencies or calls or anything like that. It's um, yeah, it's uh, it's interesting how life changes really, and it's uh, yeah, it's just it's just how things are at the moment really, isn't it? Maybe maybe things will change in the future. Maybe they won't. You know, uh, the the way my kind of gaming habits are these days is I'm kind of more of a switch player and a portable player it's funny because you know i i i was there so that, that i should just say quickly that armory there's the way you could it, one of the lockers in the back is where you could get the one of the one of the two items but yeah i kind of got the switch for its portability and for that for the game on the go but i've kind of been treating it as a home console only i'm just I'm terrified of taking that um um, out of me in case it gets stolen or something like that. I don't know. I'm one of those weird people like that, but <laughs> you know, 
<laughs> it's not exactly a cheap, it's not a cheap portable, is it? Um, yeah, yeah, I'm not, never afraid to take my 3DS or my PSPs around and out with me. Um, but I only usually carry one system at a time. Um, um, but yeah, but maybe that'll change in the future, you know. Probably I'll start taking the Switch out of me. I don't know, I just, I, I guess it's the stigma, is that I'm worried what people might think when they see you plop a Switch on a table and start playing it. <laughs> Some people are much braver than I am, where they have, they have no, they don't mind, they're not bothered, are they? But, um... <laughs> I, I'm one of those folks that I've always uh, gaming's always had to be kind of like a closet thing, really, where you know you don't tell people you're a gamer because you get that get that weird look people give you. Um, like I said, this is just uh, my experience. I don't know why I bothered combining ammo to the bow gun. I'm never going to use it. Um, I keep looking at the lockers because I assume that there's more ammo in them than usually is, but for some reason there's not. But I I don't have double check. Yeah, I mean I'm I'm still I'm people that don't people only know that I'm a guy. Who, guy that does video games that I'm close to, good close friends and um, online people online of course and um, that's it. Nobody from work knows I'm sort of do this sort of stuff and um, not the types that would be probably be okay. It was interesting actually because it's a bit like when um when you're younger you meet and even one of my, my bestest friends to this day, uh, who who I met at university you, when you find that person that you're able to kind of talk about video games with, you tend to like, you both go in your little fanboy corner, don't you? And then um, you, know, you, you chat, you get all excited about talking about video games. And then when you go into other social situations, when you go down to bar, obviously you just, you just shut down, you lock, lock all that conversation down and just talk about other things, don't you? <laughs> oh yeah, girls and stuff and uh, manly things. I don't know, I'm trying to think what my university days were like. Oh, I'm probably just alcohol. I don't think you really had any, that much intellectual conversations, but well, not, not that you need to. You don't have to have intellectual conversations. I don't know, but we didn't talk video games. That's all. I'm, that's what I'm trying to say. Um, so I'm going back to the uh, item box just to get the. So you got all the items. Uh, basically, well, we get, no, no. We sorry. I'm that's back right. I need the lighter, basically, the lighter for the final um, puzzle that we need to do, um, and also so I can just stash loads of this stuff. So I'm going to get the um, the half of the key item. And get rid of the bow gun forever. Never use it again. Yeah, I need the crank too. Uh, and I think that because obviously the handy thing is, is once that club key is used, it'll be discarded. Never do that again. And then, then we're done with the police station. It was all over. And it's weird because it, it, it do you do have to go through the entire kind of police station segment before you even and encounter kind of like kind of like a main main boss encounter. Really. And then the, the boss fights after that do kind of come fairly thick and fast, um, which we're going to see. Because we're, yeah, we're, we're, we're way in now, and we've got less than an hour left, really. So. <laughs> and we're not even out of the police station yet. Shows you how quick the second half is. Um, so, yeah, we're going back to that kind of uh, area where we had the linker jump through, jump through the window. And this, uh, this does get interesting in Scenario B, because uh, Scenario B, as I kind of hinted at, you've got... Uh, Mr. X is chasing you, which is basically like a, an early prototype of the idea of Nemesis, where he'll just randomly appear. But in um, it's a bit more. It feels much, much more scripted in Resident Evil 2. Like he, he really only appears at very set points in the game. Whereas even though it is still quite scripted in Resident Evil 3, it sometimes comes across as more random. There's one more liquor left, and we're going to just grenade him. Take that fella out. And then yeah, you have to use the lighter here, and it's just, this is one of the easy things that some people might forget, and this would be a frustrating bit for the segment for people, where you'll be like, oh, I've got to go back and get the damn lighter, because the item box is fairly far away. You've got to do a basic little puzzle here with the um, with the lanterns, uh, which you don't need to use lighter twice, you only need to use it in that little furnace, basically, and then you can use it, um, and then you can operate those things. And it's basically guesswork, you just guess the combination and figure it out and then you then the unlocks the cog which we're going to need for one more bit and, um, and and another liquor section as well and then we're done with the police station so that's what we're, we're kind of be doing we're going to be kind of doing a bit of backtracking now so going back through giving it one last you know hello goodbye to the police station it's funny actually because I was uh, I thought I'd be highlighting more issues with my playthrough there has been some mistakes clearly I've seen but not as bad as I thought. Maybe they're the one. Maybe they're later. Than I'm thinking of, but but yeah, we'll we'll find out what where Chief Iron is at <laughs> in just a section. Not really sure what else to say about the police station, really. But it's you know, kind of kind of 
but I'm quite pr I'm quite pleased with how sort of seamless um because because usually that's something I'll I mean, I do in some playthroughs where I, I make I make a goof and it you have to return to an item box to do a bit of backtracking. I have done a few like I've gone through the doors and realised oh I need to go back and get something, but I seem to have picked up on it quite well this playthrough. Oh, um, there's two liquor spits actually because there's another liquor hiding up here for me. Um, and there he is. He's just he's just hanging out <laughs> on fire. <laughs> You gotta be careful as well with your grenade rounds or your bow gun rounds because the liquors can take four shots, no not four, three, up to three shots. And two is the magic number, that's what you kind of want to take them out with, but it's, it is possible that if you don't quite, because as you saw with, when the grenade launch rounds come out, a few of them come out, if they don't all connect then um, it doesn't do all the damage that you want. So this is the bit where with those shutters, the, if you didn't use the wiring for one of the shutters, the basic zombies would enter both areas. It doesn't really matter because you shouldn't need to revisit these bits, but of course um, Leon is going to be going through these sections later, so it means he's pretty safe for that other, that other route essentially. But yeah, you, 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 all your business should be done at this point, you should be fine. Um, so you shouldn't, you shouldn't need to go back to those areas for any reason, because they're out of the, sort of the, the key route direction. So there's one more licker here, he's a bit of a fiddly one because he's on the... because he starts long range again. And again, you gotta be really cautious of the kind of the lunge attack stuff because, yeah, that can just wreck your day. I mean, obviously, a sensible person would be playing, would be saving in these games, unless, of course, you're a speedrunner. Of course, if you speedrun this stuff, you're not, you're not saving. You're just going through without saving. But I said, I'm, I'm, I, I don't save. No, I don't save. Um, the only one I'm still saving with actually, though, is I. Because I I, I'm, I can do no safe playthroughs of the first two games um, of Resident Evil, the, the original PlayStation game, and Resident Evil 2, but I'm yet to, I guess, be confident enough to do Resident Evil 3 um, and Code Veronica without saving. I did try Code Veronica without saving. However, uh, Code Veronica is actually quite a long game, um, as I've sort of rediscovered. It's, so when I do try to do when I do save it's usually just because I do need to just take a break and be, to be honest guys and taking breaks is actually quite important when you're gaming anyway you shouldn't really you really it's not it's not good to be binging on this stuff all the time <laughs> you know to, you know, it's, to, to do you remember to get up and have a little walk about and do stuff like that um because I mean I'm, I'm guilty of it back in the day you know um, I used to be one of the folks that you know you'd spend you'd binge ages you'd have one of those all-night sessions and, stuff. and it's fun it's because you're enjoying yourself and maybe you're enjoying yourself and you're having fun with friends and stuff like that but you know it's, it is important to get up and stretch your legs and stuff like that you know you don't you don't want to end up with sort of any issues or health problems so you stay healthy guys so please do um, okay this will be the point of, this is where I get there. everyone's gonna roll rise me I don't need any health advice from you <laughs> uh, and then again I don't, I don't I don't mind at the end of the day yeah you know, I'm just uh, speaking from experience I guess as someone that's trying to recover from some health problems at the moment but yeah you know, I'm, I'm getting there but I don't but those those health problems aren't really video game induced or are, or are they I don't know maybe you'll tell me <laughs> so <laughs> we'll see maybe something of one of those long Things that needs investigating on the complexity of humans, but yeah. So we're now we basically all we need to do now is we need to just head back to the heli base. Well, basically Chief Iron's office. Um, enter the um, final key item, and we will progress. I will say because uh, we'll finally have our first boss encounter as well. Taking a while. So this is the first one. The first boss encounter is quite interesting as well, actually, uh, which I'll because. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll touch on it when we get to it, actually. We'll, we'll focus more on sort of where we are at the moment. I briefly talked about, maybe maybe well, this is a good opportunity to talk about online stuff again, about right, bringing Outbreak and games back. Uh, so Outbreak was never released on PC, as far as I was aware, but um, does, I do wonder if that would even do well on PC now, considering because Resident, Evil, Resident Evil's presence is going to be much more console than PC. Um, Whereas you know, if Resident Evil started on the PC, then maybe it would have more PC fandom. But yeah, I, I would I would still be all for um, an outbreak coming to any modern system. You know, help put on the Switch. You know, everyone loves this, everyone loves shouting about Switch ports, don't they? Um, but people just having the opportunity to revisit. I mean, and to be honest, that's sometimes the thing with some of these old games is that when they get their second chance in the spotlight, they sometimes are more appreciated. Certainly, remake 
was definitely much more reached a bigger audience. I feel I think it did anyway. I could I could be wrong statistically Claire. than it did on GameCube for the time. Um, maybe not the best Sherry, example, but okay. but I, I I'm think I'm I'm, I'm all. We you know we debate. Fred and I have debated Fred, um, remasters and remakes and stuff a lot, yeah. and um, all for it. And I, I'm all for. I'm, I'm. I think I'm probably one of those folks that's much more in favour of just bringing games back as they were. Um, in the you know, in the, I don't mind it if you're gonna like dust up the graphics or anything yeah. like that and you know, change some of those cobwebs. I'm going down but I, I do, Stay I do like things in their original form. At least being the original form, at least being available as an option. I mean, a good example of this is the flashbacks coming back soon. Um, which is weird, actually, 25th anniversary, although I've heard it's the 25th anniversary of the new Super Nintendo version, <laughs> not, not the Amiga version. Um, so that version is coming to Switch uh, this June, summer, I guess. Uh, it's got, like, a... It's, it's the original version. It's the original 2D version, and what most people probably say is the best version still compared to the, the remake that happened from Ubisoft. Um, but they're kind of doing, like, a, a redone version of the 2D version where I think it's supposed to be a bit easier, the graphics are cleaner, but... What's great about the version is, of course, they do have it in its original vanilla form, if you want to play it. So it, it suits both the purists and it suits maybe new folk that are coming to it, too. And I'm quite, I'm quite interested in that, especially about the price tag has got lumped of it. I mean, maybe it'll, be, maybe it'll be available digitally for significantly cheaper, but it's like... Pre-orders at the moment are looking at £35 with it, but it's, it's doing like one of those special editions where it comes with all this tat with it, you know, like, a, you know, like the, the tin box and all that, and soundtrack and credit card or whatever things you need with a special edition these days to justify the £35 price tag um, and don't get me wrong I, loved, I do like physical editions still I'm still about physical versions especially for games I like I mean I, 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 I want to get the um, physical version of so Wonder Boy the Dragon's Trap for Switch um, I have it on the Xbox One Not but I quite girl. like a physical version just because I'm quite I, I have a huge huge soft spot for Wonder Boy Everyone's gonna die. so this is um, Chief Irons is now lost it <laughs> <laughs> not well, not that he's not lost it before. You saw him just doing a little ramble then that he got implanted with um, a little worm, I guess, into his um, into his body, and now he's very angry at Claire, and um, he feels betrayed, of course, by by Umbrella. Um, <laughs> I love uh, Claire's tone here. What what is it? Tell me. Instantly. Lovely, lovely, just brilliant old um, horror tropes of like just the of, uh, people t people telling t telling all their all their mighty plan and what's going on before something terrible happens. To them, as we're going to see with Chief Irons in a second. <laughs> the, yeah, basically, yeah, uh, yeah. Chief Irons, as you, which you find out from reading the documents. I didn't pick it up. But, um, there's a he leaves his diary and it tells about his like you know, being. He's he's basically he's he's with he's not with Umbrella but you know he's he's not he's working with them essentially and um, he's he's corrupt basically he's, that's that's he's corrupt that's it <laughs> it's quite quite straightforward but but he's basically just giving that a bit more of a monologue about that now I'm going to take you with me. But before he can take Claire with him, something horrible happens to him, and we get quite a satisfying, gory death right here. Take the pain. Kaboom! <laughs> Poor Irons. That's like that's quite a fast, you know. It's very inconsistent with these kind of transformations because he got implanted very, not too long ago, really, and then that that. Chest burst happens very quickly, <laughs> a bit like um, Alien Covenant, which we saw, which I saw recently. <laughs> um, yeah, less said about that movie, the better. Just my opinion, but um, yeah. But so anyway, but I, I, don't, I don't think I mentioned, but Sherry gets implanted later, and it seems to take forever for her to. <laughs> maybe it's her being young or something. I don't know. We'll see. So anyway, that, and then quickly, that thing that escaped him transforms in what seems like a couple of seconds. <laughs> like really quickly. <laughs> really fast. They're very inconsistent here. This moves quicker than Alien Covenant too. So this is the, um, I guess, the what, what Chief Irons gave birth to. And it's like a mini tyrant. Mini tyrant that is um, vomiting out more just parasites, I guess. I don't know. But straight away, so some of those parasites will latch on to Claire. And as you've already seen, I've got the, the um, chemical rounds out already. Um, chemical rounds are basically the best things to use. I'm being a bit cautious here as well, as you'll see, because I'm trying to look for that... Basically look that the, the monster's gone down, and look for that satisfying green blood stain around him. 
because what can happen here is basically what you're supposed to do is you ask you have to defeat the monster you have to defeat him but you can run away so you can backtrack and go back um and he won't be dead he'll still be there to advance the section you have to take out the monster so you can go backwards which what i'm doing now to go get sherry and advance the plot essentially otherwise um the monster what can happen is you can start shooting the monster think he's dead because he's lumped on the floor and then go and he's not and then you go back and he's alive again you got to take him out again and i think possibly he's in full health as well um but so it's a, it's a bit of a you've got to be a bit cautious he's not too hard especially with claire's chemical rounds with leon i think you have the magnum at this stage so yeah magnum him use the magnum on him um but fairly straightforward the only things that are a pain in the backside are those little parasites because they yeah they latch onto you and they basically just just more of an irritation but they don't kill you um but i guess they can if you're on low health but you came back. <laughs> I can't believe the man who developed the G virus is. Can't believe it's the father. <gasps> and then, as we'll see, uh, so if you thought the escort mission in uh, Resident Evil 4 was bad, it's you've not seen bad. anything yet but because. Because, <laughs> as you remember, when I play the Sherry, she's not the fastest runner. So, when Sherry is following you, um, as you're running away, she will um, ha quite literally have a tantrum. And she'll kind of go into like a little fetal position and just... Well, she doesn't have a tantrum really, but you know, she she stop in her tracks and just basically curl up in a ball until you go back and rescue her. And it's quite... So she does, she's not... She's got to kind of like pace yourself a bit. You can't run... Just like run like crazy, unfortunately, which is what you'd want to do. So you've got to kind of stagger your movement. I think I try and do that, but I think there is a few moments you'll see Sherry get a, bit, a little upset with, with Claire. Um, it's all good fun, though. So we're done with the police station, finally. And I can't, it's, it's quite fascinating because we're like, it's an hour and a half, I think, we've gone in so far. And um, here we are, really. And it, it feels like there's not a lot to go. So. But yeah, the, the, the sewer's fun, though. I mean, what. what well, I'll, I'll touch on it when we get to I'm not going to spoil what that, that fun is, but. Um, but uh, the game, as I mentioned, is now a lot more forward moving. So it's there's there is obviously little icks and bits of backtracking and potential irritations if you don't pick up the right item in advance uh particularly so one um, pro tip pro tips dice um sewers have your valve ready <laughs> so have that equipped and <laughs> for two reasons too actually um so we're going to enter the sewers and we're going to get a oh no we're not yet no so we're nearly entering the sewers we're kind of getting there so, yeah, Sherry, I'm doing a pretty good job of keeping Sherry under control there, so she's following nicely behind. So that, basically, if you did the boss fight and you go straight for the ladder, Claire will say, oh, I need to go back for Sherry. Um, I think if the monster's still alive, she says there's still monsters present or something. <laughs> At least I remember that from one of the Resident Evil games. Um, because there are sort of, like, areas of Resident Evil games where, yeah, you have to defeat the monster in said room. So we get a good full shot of our William Birkin in his yeah, kind of like early good. transformed form with the with the big old eye which we saw earlier, and so you know we're getting into, getting into that lovely sewage sludge. Never mind the smell. <laughs> Run! <laughs> yeah. It, it, William doesn't want to break the laws of the balcony, so he doesn't want to come over that balcony and get us. He just he's gonna be civil this time and just you know just come out, come at us at our own pace. <laughs> so this bit's fun. Um, here we go. This is the final section where we take control of Sherry. Um, so Sherry is gonna get got by the um, by the mysteries of the mysteries of the sewer, and it just seems like a whoop moment, and Claire's just like huh. <laughs> Here. So Claire doesn't like, you know, she doesn't squeeze in and follow after her. <laughs> she doesn't get, she doesn't get, she doesn't get into that sewer water. Maybe that's for the best, actually. After all, yeah, it's good as knows what's in this sewer water. Um, yeah, now you're about, so now I'm controlling a sherry again. Fortunately, um, maybe fortunately for the last time. Uh, and there's not really much to this bit with Sherry. All you really do need to do is just go from room to room. You don't need to pick up anything, although kind of to end the section you have to pick up one item. Um, so you just go into the vent. The only possible trouble you're going to have is in this little section just here. 
which is uh, the cockroaches. The yes, the lovely cockroaches of Resident Evil, which, as far as I'm aware, I don't think they do any damage. They are just a massive nuisance. So once they get latched onto you, you just have to do the old you know, rapidly press your buttons to get them off you. That that section just there though can sometimes take a while. Like you know, you can get five or six cockroaches latched onto you. It's a real just a pain more than anything. Uh, so we do yep, pick up the wolf medal, and that's it for Sherry. We are done with Sherry for this whole playthrough. Dramatic music. So falls on a pile of guff. Thank God she fell on the dustbin bag. <laughs> oh. So, and then of course, William has somehow caught up in, I guess, an advance. And it's kind of going to give us the impression that he's implanted Jerry. Except, unlike um, Chief Irons, who basically dies in almost instantly, <laughs> Sherry will take significantly longer. <laughs> Unless of course we cure her, which we do. Uh, I don't feel I don't think there is that you can't see Sherry die. <laughs> they, they had morals when they made Resident Evil. Like, We're not going to kill a kid on screen. <laughs> we'll just imply that she could die. So uh, blue herbs, I do yeah recommend definitely pick up any blue herb because you never know when you might get duped by a damn spider. Um, spiders, plants, and um, I don't, yeah I don't think the moths do poison you know. So I'll just say spiders and plants. They can um. Yeah, they, they basically spew out like a little spray, which I, doesn't always poison you, but it has the potential to. It's like a, I think it's like a percentage chance, quite high. Um, what's really entertaining is your companion character can be poisoned as well, and you can't heal them. But additionally, I also don't think they can die either. I don't know. I've never, I've never um, tried to uh, test that theory just in case, because obviously it just ends another fail, is not it? Um, the reason I've seen this happen is that Ada. Um, who, play, uh, who follows Leon about in this sewer section? I somehow managed to get her poisoned by a spider, and then she did the the animation where she's holding her abdomen, which implies that she's been poisoned. <laughs> so, so obviously, I was a little bit panicked, thinking we need to really run through this next section so she doesn't die. <laughs> But um, with Sherry, she doesn't have any damage indication on her body. If she gets hurt, you don't know, um, which is a, which is a little bit scary. But I don't know if you can kill your support characters. Um, at least when you when they're when they're following you. At least anyway. So I've just gone into the uh, the back room where Sherry literally just was, just to pick up some more grenade ammo. I go through the wrong bloody door. Um, I go through that door for some reason when I should just go up the ladder. And this this just takes you into that room where Sherry started. Where there's nothing here basically. So it's a waste of time. Um, so there's a mistake I've made. <laughs> so we're going back to the storeroom. There's quite a few items in that storeroom too. Um, in the bag there's some ammo. In the locker there's a health spray. Um, what you should do at this section, I, I believe I forget to do it. So that's why I, I go down the elevator and go up the elevator. This may be the playthrough where I do it three times, I think. Because <laughs> I'm just having one of those moments where I'm thinking... Oh! So yeah, I'm pretty sure I don't have the valve with me, and I, I realise this quite quickly. Um, so yeah, because you'll need the valve to do another puzzle. Well, not really, it's not even really a puzzle, you just need to use the valve. So yeah, I have realised this, because I'm already trying to turn around to, to, to go back. <laughs> Although I don't think this is where... I, I've, I'm pretty sure I do this a few times by accident. So I'm going to go back to, as you're going to see, I'm going to go back to the item box and pick up something that I think I need um, for the next section. So we're going to see it here, um, and I'm pretty sure it's not the valve. <laughs> so here we go, let's see. So this is where you're going to see, uh, ja yeah, ja I, I think I just need to put the grenade launcher bag. I don't need the valve, which is clearly in the um, item box. So I go back down, of course, <laughs> and I think I realise straight away, oh yeah, I'm supposed to pick up the valve. And the reason you want the valve is it just stops this tedious backtracking, because what you'll do, you'll get, you'll get to a, um, a section where you clearly know you need to use the valve. <laughs> and then we were supposed to use it uh, and then you obviously got to run all the way back and use it so that's the second time I backtracked and I think I do I don't think I get the valve on this one either I think it's the next time or maybe I'm wrong we'll see so what's gonna what what item are we gonna take out oh no I do there we go got it and then we're good to go so we're good <laughs> so I do get the valve there so we're all safe now now we can progress that's a, that's another little sort of tip there is um, 
have the valve ready for the sewer section. At least if you're certainly if you're a speed runny folk, this that you'll you'll want that in advance. Um, yeah, the back the backtracking is just a touch tedious, really, uh, for this bit because there's not really a lot to it. Otherwise, the section is actually quite small, really. Um, yeah, they, I don't really, don't really talk about maps really, but maps are scattered around the game. Um, you can, it's just a touch of a button just to look at the map, which comes in handy for first timers, of course, but if you get for the familiar of the game, you'll never use the maps at all. I was actually using the maps for Resident Evil 3 because I was, um, I, I got a bit stumped on the end section of that game again, thinking, oh, where do I go? How do I progress this stuff? So, I'm trying to get myself re familiar of that game. Um, I'm definitely at that stage, as I said earlier. I'm not quite to the point where I can do a no save playthrough. Um, would like to, because that game, funny enough, people are crazy fast at that game. There's people that can that I finish that game in well under so like 50 minutes on a playthrough. And it, that's a pretty big game as well, because. Um, it's only replaying myself. Resident Evil 3 is surprisingly large, actually, when you re redo it. For a game that was supposed to just be a spin-off title, um, it essentially, to me, almost feels like combining um, scenarios A and B together. And maybe then some. Um, but I do feel it's definitely... Because it still kind of has retained a lot of that old-school Resident Evil design. Once you get more familiar with it, yeah, I think you can blast through that game in a single playthrough. Absolutely. So... Here's a bit where we're going to pause for quite a while now. Um, so this is Annette, uh, who's Sherry's Sherry's mother, basically, um, who really likes umbrella, guns, right? and or at least likes pointing Plenty guns at people. And no idea really what um, why she's just waddling around in random places. In this case, just turns up in the sewers and turns up in the lab. <laughs> and um, so. Yeah, but again, plot points. <laughs> um, so she's basically, this section here is, you'll either be playing as Claire where Annette will tell the origins of William, or you'll play as Ada, and, and Annette will tell Ada for some reason, even though she absolutely hates Ada, <laughs> as you'll learn quite quickly. William will be after her. So... William? You basically learn That's that right. yeah, she instructed her daughter to run away from none. Daddy, run to the police station, rather than go with her. Yeah. So yeah, with this is um a nice little cutscene just here. Um, interesting note here actually, because uh, Fred and I, Voss and Matt played through this Operation way. Raccoon City, and it's interesting viewing this again now, where they do recycle it's this sheer. same dialogue in that game when they My kind of revisit this virus. section in the first no level of Operation Raccoon City. Obviously, the design's just all over the place, and the door, the the sort of the the, the layout, because this is obviously a, a pre-rendered game. Uh, the Operation Raccoon City so is a full-fledged 3D come. game. The designs of the labs are completely different, like but I guess. One of those Sorry, soldiers is supposed to be Hunk. I never really it just to be they're just like like generic um, derpy gas mask guy. So of course, you know, William drops something, and the soldier's That'd response is, of course, just to okay, shoot the hell out of him. <laughs> so, and um, as you do when you're a mad scientist, you know, you're dying on the floor. The the oh. your first instinct is to, oh, to of course, God. inject yourself I'm with this virus. <laughs> And, and then we have we have William Burke in the monster uh, begins to form. Alpha team, have you retrieved the sample yet? Affirmative. We'll be at the rendezvous point in one minute. Roger. But it's, it's obviously this this graphics has not aged well, but you know for the time it was quite interesting. It looked good. It certainly looks good with this, 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 on the GameCube, I say. It looks a bit nice, looks a lot smoother than um, the, virus the original the PlayStation version. I mean, yeah, it's got probably a good opportunity to talk a few. I mean, the, the, the ports of Resident Evil 2 are not. You know, I, I always, I'm always fascinated by the N64 version because it is just a impressive feat of data compression, really, of how. Because the. Uh, that, yeah, that shoving that game on a tiny, tiny N64 cartridge, and that is t basically a two-disc game that was a two-disc PlayStation game. Um, one disc being obviously Leon scenarios and one disc being Claire scenarios. Um, it's, it's just, it, but then the GameCube one just has both scenarios on one disc. I think the Dreamcast one does it on two discs as well, actually. Um, could be wrong about that, but when you when you go to the GameCube menus, it basically just asks you which stories you want to play, and then if you want to swap over, you go to the the menu in the the main menu, you go to the option section, just ask choose play it, on the layer story. Um, and yeah, basically that's just the origins of the how the virus got out, I guess, and started infecting the city. So I guess 
plague origins, kind of? Rats and stuff? I don't know. I, don't really kind of, I still don't understand um, the, the, little, the little kind of fun plot hole I always joked about myself when playing through this is that... So William Birkin has transformed himself quite early on there. And you're supposed to assume that quite a lot of time has happened because obviously the city is infected um, and lot, you know, a lot has happened, a lot of time has passed, but he still hasn't transformed a lot when you've started playing Resident Evil 2. But yeah, as, you'll prog as we'll progress through this game, you'll see him transform really fast. And then of course, someone will probably jump up and put their hand up and go, well, that's just how the virus works. <laughs> but you know. I don't mind poking fun of Rezio. I'm, I'm a huge fan of this game, but I love to play fun of stuff, even stuff I like. <laughs> it's an inherent but, survival instinct. Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. Those those um, those cutscenes you can skip on. I think any version of the game, but with these in-game you ones, way. you can't skip in most versions of the game. But you can in the GameCube, which is obviously handy if you're a speedrunner. Um, it's funny because you obviously hear Sherry screaming, and this is why you need the valve, guys. This is why the valve's here, because you need to use it to lower the platform so you can progress. Otherwise, you need to go back. Um, and yeah, it's just, just pointless backtracking, really. But um, Now, this is a bit... Don't get duped by this as well. This is just another pro tip, and again, for, to avoid tedium, is when you go across the bridge, use the valve again in that same slot. Otherwise, what's going to happen is you're going to have to backtrack and use the damn valve again so you can progress later. So basically, send it back up, is what we're saying. So let it go. Although maybe it's not essential for players one, actually, because she does find both medals in uh, the same section. But basically, it's what I, I'd recommend. Uh, that's that's the, my recommendation. Um, definitely for Leon's, you do want to go that route. Uh, it's obviously a stop to pick up some health. And we've got a very, very entertaining boss battle coming up in just a second, which... Um, you may you know some people who've played this game before who maybe play this boss battle differently um, might be thinking, why on earth are you going in with a pistol? <laughs> you're you're a little bit ill-equipped for this boss battle. So, and there's a big reason why um, for that is that this boss can be made very very easy uh, with just a little bit of exploration. So, we're just basically going to go rescue Sherry now, and you'll see. You'll see precisely how to do this um, boss battle in a single handgun bullet. Um, so there it is, she is. She's, uh, well, she still passed out, so I don't understand how she screamed, but you know, hey, <laughs> we're not going to complain too much. Sherry! Maybe it wasn't her that screamed, maybe it was this, uh, maybe it was the crocodile. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, giant crocodile, giant zombie crocodile, uh, whatever you want to call it, or infected. Um, T virus crocodile because of course you know, crocodiles alligators are always in the sewers <laughs> so yes the best strategy and the only strategy you need to do is run up to that little canister you need to click on it you do need to acknowledge that you need to like, use the use button or whatever X on the PlayStation or A on the GameCube um, let it just sit there on the floor let the crocodile get it in his mouth wait until it's in its mouth first and then all you do is blast it and that boss battle is done now, if you don't do that, um, what you will have on your hands is an incredibly frustrating boss fight, um, which will require a lot of ammo and a, a very aggressive um, crocodile, which does take a lot. I did, I've tried it once um, just to see what it was like, and it is not, it's not fun. Um, when you shoot him, he gets aggravated, he gets very irritated, and um, he kind of lunges at you a bit more. Uh, so just the easiest thing to do, and it's the same with any kind of speedrun version of this game, is just do the one-shot kill thing. It's just just for the best, really. Wake up, Sherry. And that's basically that's um, another boss fight done. Two down. And I don't think we're gonna have another. Yeah, we, we, yeah, we're not gonna have another one for a bit actually. Uh, so I always found this section interesting because Claire's, of course. Stomach. That you've seen the embryo, I guess, leave Sherry, which I'm surprised. I thought that I was assuming Don't the embryo worry. just died It'll when they left, or well, they just entered it, they just stayed there. But obviously, Let's that one go. doesn't, that one floats away. And I don't know if that's just for the player to acknowledge, like the player's yeah. seen that, but it's, it's hard to say if Claire's seen it. But you're sure as, sure as hell find out very soon that Claire will be, she'll be very aware of what's happening to Sherry. <laughs> so. So we're back, going back up the ladder, we've got one more wolf metal, to, well, it's not a wolf metal, we get another medal to collect just so we can progress through the sewers. Um, you're going to see Sherry do a deliberate tantrum in a second, so you are going to see her basically just dump on the floor there um, in a big ball. 
there you go so gonna go it doesn't matter though at this point because i've got to backtrack anyway to go back to another section um another one last valve puzzle <laughs> um so there she is she's in a little ball so you gotta let you gotta get her to follow you and i think we will see at least once or twice in this playthrough of her not wanting to follow me <laughs> because i run too far ahead basically so yeah use the valve bit there um, and it will basically shut off the the vent so that you can go through and gives you a little, little, little kind of a little shortcut cut back to the early section and this also prevents me needing to go to any item boxes or anything like that which is handy so back up here uh, in with Leon's section there just usually cockroaches here if you're running through here with Ada but I don't think there's any when I play through this with um, Claire um, which is handy because cockroaches are a pain. Yeah, so you see, yeah, Sherry uh, just for some reason just wants to walk that way. So I'm, I've got to go back and collect her <laughs> before I can move on. <laughs> so she has to be in kind of like a, a, a particular region there for you to, for her to follow you through to the next area, which is kind of annoying. The strategy you want to do is you kind of want to pace yourself so that she is. You're running, but then you're stopping, and you're running, and you're stopping, and you're running, and you're stopping. So it keeps kind of like an even pace to her run. So basically, so Sherry is always running is what you're aiming for. Fortunately, though, though it, it comes across like it might be quite frustrating that she's like this and that she's difficult. It's not for long, really. You don't have to, and and it's it doesn't really. You don't really have to worry about her getting hurt. Like I said, this is the bit where I had Ada get poisoned. That spider dropped poison from the ceiling and it hit a it hit Ada. Um, it almost looks like it might have got Sherry then, but usually they react to it. The the character you'll see a dam them them by lunch or something. They'll they'll sort of stagger a bit or something if something happens. Never had a support character get got by a zombie. Sherry can't just can't physically get 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 bitten from a zombie because they're just too high up. They just sprayed the kind of like the goo down at her. <laughs> I don't think she did get she, I don't think she did get got by poison. I think she was fine. I think when I played through this originally, I thought she had. Because of the, it, you saw, you saw like the animation come from the ceiling then. But yeah, this is um, now we're just basically, yeah, we're done. We're done with the sewers. We're done there, and we're just basically now moving on to the final segment of the game, which is the underground lab. And then that's it for the game. I'm still fascinated by this. We're nearly, nearly two hours in now, and um, I'm surprised also my voice is held up too. <laughs> but yeah. I go looking around here because I think there's some arrow, but there's not. Um, so you just gotta go and uh, turn on the the monorail. Monorail. Uh, so we can stab. Now there is an interesting bit to point out here, actually, because now I was always under the impression that you had to have the lighter with you to get this uh, this item. But I found out from watching footage of other people play this game, speedrunners particularly, that you don't need um, the the lighter. There's a section when you, you go through the monorail, you go by, by down, and there's a a bit where you can light off a flare um, just here if you want to but you'll need the light to do it with Claire but and if you do that it'll highlight an item it'll, it'll, it'll like ding but you don't need that you can just collect the item which is really handy so that's what I'm doing here so this key this weapon box key is in the lab a lot later on so Oh, and then Sherry has a tantrum, so I've got to go back and save her. So, and that's really handy, definitely if you're um, first timer through the game as well, because it will contain grenade rounds, um, two sets of grenade rounds for Claire, and it will, it will contain a weapon modification for Leon for the Magnum, um, which is interesting because Claire doesn't have any weapon modifications in her playthrough, whereas Leon can upgrade the handgun, the shotgun, and the Magnum. Um, I guess maybe the way of thinking from the developer's point is that the, the player has the grenade rounds maybe, and they're kind of more powerful. Um, this section I'm hit at going, on, going in here is where you'd find the upgrade for the shotgun for Leon, but with Claire they give her another item, which is an item that's quite important, so they're going to use it for the boss fight basically. Um, it's like a electric shotgun. It's kind of like a shotgun, really, is what it is. It's what it comes across, but it takes up two item slots. So I'm kicking it up now. So it's the spark shot. It, at least from my playthrough, it seems pretty useless for everything else. Um, it certainly it didn't seem to help me out at all with plants or anything when I tried to use it. But And it's certainly no good with um, zombies. It seems to be a waste of time, really, with zombies. But... <laughs> However, with um, liquors, it's pretty good with, but it's quite slow. 
So I, I think the only place it's worth using is this boss fight that I've got coming up. Um, and then I, did, then I ditch it after that, and then I, I pretty much just ditch everything and just stick with the grenade. So this will be the last that I need the pistol for. I, I think I just used the pistol for the, um, the zombies that are left here. Um, all those zombies still appear in the lab section later, but I'm, I'm confident with my grenade roundage <laughs> that will be okay. Now you could go down the um, the other routes here, that, that up, and there'll be some herbs up there, but I just have no space left for them, and I don't see the need to go backtrack. I've got loads of health items. I'm doing a pretty good job of sherry here as well, and, I, and this is a rare occurrence where I weave through the zombies. Usually I just kill the zombies that are in my way in this section, so I've done quite impressed with that technique. Well done, Jam. You did, you did well, kids, there. You did well. So, a moment of calm, um, although it doesn't give the music to suit it. It's, uh, so this is a safe section. Time to kind of uh, stock up and get equipped. Um, don't think I ditched the um, handgun here, which is interesting. I do, you can ditch the valve forever now. Um, I do ditch the, um, the weapon, the key there for the moment because I just don't need it right now. Um, I get the grenade just as like a backup, just in case I need it. Um, I get some health items just, you know, just in case, why not? Uh, should have really just ditched the handgun, I just don't need it. Um, well, you know, I'm, I'm opening the box up again now, so maybe I'm going to ditch it. <laughs> I feel like being ballsy, so I obviously ditch a health item. Well, the, reason, the real reason I do that is to pick up these other items, just so I can get them. Um, just clear some space. I really just should, because uh, it's good to collect everything in the room you can and put it back in the item box, the stuff you don't need. There's a health spray on the wall there as well, which I'll probably collect on my way out. Um, so... There we go. Lots of flame rounds. Yeah, and you can do that kind of technique I'm doing there, where if you if you highlight um, the great the, the ammo rounds on the same ammo rounds in the box, they'll just combine them together, just to make things easy for you. That's something they actually fixed from the original game, where they didn't do that, which is kind of irritating. They literally just swap the ammo types, and the only way to make them go together is you have to put them in your inventory and combine them all together <laughs> to make one big lump lump lot. Because obviously um, all ammo rounds all stuck together is, um, is just one item as opposed to having several separate item slots. Um, I've no idea why I bothered with the handgun. Why did I bother taking the handgun with me? There's no point. That's, that's a lesson for next time. Um, so yeah, we're going to the... We go, yeah, we're moving forward. Um, so we've got to go... Cherry's stuck behind the box there. <laughs> And this section is basically um, the next boss fight. So we're on the third boss fight already, but like, within a very short space of time. This one is um, certainly potentially more work than the crocodile. <laughs> or alligator, I don't know. Whatever you prefer, guys, I don't mind. Um, so, okay, okay, I think I use the health item here because there's another item I can potentially pick up here, although I didn't need to pick it up, um, which is more flame rounds, which are obviously uh, pretty useful for the underground lab section. So I have this moment where I'm like, ah, screw it, I'll just heal myself. So I do. Heal up, and I go collect the the flame rounds. Uh, even though I don't don't really need them, really. Um, I probably should really experiment with that because the flame rounds probably are useful um, towards other enemies. I just uh, it just uh, I've always just only really used them on the plants, so I end up with loads of them at the end. Uh, and I, I stock I keep the chemical rounds for the boss fights. Apart from this one, this one I'm going to use the scatter the the, the shock thing for the, the shock shot <laughs> that's what it's called <laughs> um the shock shot yeah i wasn't standing close enough to the podium then so so yeah activate the and th this little um this almost came i guess iconic for hardcore resident evil fans this little train thing that we're getting on because this would appear in not only resident evil this really really trade but it would feature in resident evil zero later down the road you'll see a little cameo of it where you'd walk through the the underground lab section very briefly uh, and it'll turn up in like the Dark Side Chronicles games and um, I think yes it is in um, Operation Raccoon City as well so yeah so this is a nice interesting <laughs> interesting train thing but we never actually see function as a train <laughs> and of course Jerry's stomach, stomach is and rather than it um, you know, just exploding in a horrible gory mess in this um, <laughs> in this interior uh, Sherry just takes a nap and so Clary, Claire instantly knows what the problem is she is she's clued in she has her doctorate in um, you know bioweapons that <laughs> which have only just been created so, so she knows that she's infected somehow which again leads me to believe that cutscene later she must have seen the thing crawl out of her but 
you know, she doesn't seem too bothered. She seems pretty confident she can find a cure that I don't think she knows exists yet. <laughs> but, so. so the door is locked because of course it is. And um, we are going to fight William Birkin for the first time, I believe. So this is good. I like this transformation scene because you see his face basically, I guess, recede into his body. It kind of becomes secondary. He sprouts, I guess, a bit more of a dominant face. And all of William Birkin's transformations are pretty satisfying. I do quite enjoy them, actually. That's one of the highlights of them. Um, there's basically there's several forms of him that you're going to see through this game. Um, through both scenario A and scenario B, and you'll see different versions of him through each scenario. Um, multiple forms. I think if you like, if there's a guy, the guides I used to read when I was younger, they used to call it like old Birkin A, B, C, D, E, F, or whatever. Um, particularly his last form that you'll encounter in the game is just like a nice hot mess, which is quite quite interesting. <laughs> um, so this boss fight, the bit, my strategy, my strategy, I should say, is really keep your distance, try not to get close. You will occasionally slump down, and that's your opportunity to run past him. Because if you try and run past him, of course he's going to swing at you with the um, the big nice little big claw he's got there. So when he does that big old screech that he's doing there, that's the indication that the battle's over. And when the music's all calm and stuff, you know you've done. And of course, Claire's logic is rather than shoot him a bit more and make sure he's definitely, definitely dead, uh, we just go and hide up in the train. <laughs> As you do. Um, makes a bit more sense when you play this this fight in scenario B, where William Birkin just jumps away. It makes that makes much more sense. So. Sherry. Sherry is not doing too good, but we don't worry. Claire is on hand to rescue her, so we're gonna dump her off in a in a little office somewhere. And <laughs> we're gonna get a bit of a cutscene now where we have a little, I guess, uh, attempt at heart to heart. Where you know, um, Sherry says that you know she's an only child and doesn't have a sister, and now she does because Claire's here. She's here to rescue her, even though we've only known each other for well, if we talk about the game, less than an hour. <laughs> so. I don't know. It's cute, isn't it? It's cute stuff, but I don't know. It's what makes me. I think what's interesting is obviously we Cherry would come back, wouldn't she, in the Resident Evil series, um, in as playable in playable form, and um, killable form as well. We should say in Resident Evil Six, <laughs> which um, I don't know. I don't know. Resident Evil Six is just an anom anom anomaly, really, isn't it? So I try to boot that Thank back you. up and replay it, which is a very hard no. game to play by yourself, I think. I'm a very fun game to play with someone else. Um, just for, a bit like Racking City, really. Is uh, you can you, you can just have work. fun playing that game with someone. The, ga the gameplay is solid enough, you know. It's just a shooty bang bang game. Um, but you'll have fun poking at the, the just the absurdity of the plot, really, and the dumbness of it. And that's not to say that Resident Evil 2 is some masterpiece. It's not, but you know the, the plots in all of these games are just kind of derpy and silly. But Resident Evil is definitely at its strongest when it doesn't doesn't take itself too seriously which i think is highlighted at most in um, the first game um on the playstation and um the recent uh, masterpiece that was resident evil 7 which i thoroughly enjoyed despite having a lot of skepticism against it um but again that again i i, I don't half put my hands up and say it's probably because i'm a dinosaur about the series and kind of puristy effects where you know I, I we, I've been playing these games for so long as third person games or you know as, as these these types of games the move to first person just seemed baffling to me it just seemed bizarre um, but I'm, I am always happy to be proved wrong when they get things right and it's definitely an example of that you know I'm, I'm all for game designers messing around and changing things up um, you know, and sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. But I think I, I you, you've always got to admire them for trying, really, because at the end of the day, as much as the, you know, I'm certainly one of those guys that I say I like things to be different, and I, I certainly try and highlight that when I can. But there's there's times where obviously, you know, you, you just you, you you do just want the same. <laughs> we just don't we don't admit it out loud. But I think it's almost like an internal thing, isn't it? Yeah, we don't like change. We don't like it when things are different. So it's like a lesson for life really change is hard but but i think change generally speaking it's good to be open to it really uh, my favorite example of change was uh, which i liked most was um bubble bobble um, and rainbow islands those two shifts uh, how the director said that 
uh, he did want Rainbow Islands to be different and not the same as Bubble Bobble for that reason. He wants the sequel to be something new, something different. Um, Bubble Bobble being obviously a two-player co-op, you know, take out one of these on screen and then Rainbow Islands is a, uh, a vertical scrolling platform uh, which is really predominantly one player really with, with no two-player at the same time. And I really respect those decisions that developers do. Another recent example of that is um, SteamWorld Dig and SteamWorld Heist, although obviously now the developers image form did release SteamWorld Dig 2 which is a direct sequel to uh, the first game but they sort of said something similar that they wanted the the, the follow-up game in that kind of expanded universe of the SteamWorld series to be different from SteamWorld Dig and I, I adore SteamWorld Heist, I think that game is brilliant it's really good um, and really it's still again one of the many reasons why I think image form is so such a good developer to this day and I I, I love I just love their work I, I don't think that so far they haven't put a foot wrong and then they're, they're absolutely allowed to put a foot wrong any developer is allowed to put a foot wrong you can make mistakes um, and it's fine I just think it's always it's hard really for games because because games are so expensive and they take so long to make it's and it's like with anything isn't it is that yeah you draw a picture i could draw a picture for you right now and you'll tell me it's rubbish because i'm a terrible artist but i probably won't think much of it because i didn't put much time into it you know i probably i could do you a quick five minute sketch and i'll be all right because it's only five minutes but with a video game it does take a long time you know it's you know these games are not easily made not cranked out in a day you know take they, they're made over a course of years so it's hard when you release a game especially when you're trying to do something new and, and you're trying to be creative or do things differently and then it just the, the product just gets absolutely obliterated in crit by critics and i think that is hard that is hard to take i think sometimes because uh, i yeah, I, li I like to think that even even with those companies, like say the ones we joke about, like EA and Activision, I, I like to think that there is people working on those games that are genuinely passionate about what they do. I mean, one, one I'll hold my arms up against is say Halo 5. I really didn't like Halo 5, mostly because I was very, very upset that they didn't put co-op into it. Split screen co-op specifically. Co-op is present, but they don't have split screen co-op, and that's something that's very important to me um, in the game. And it was removed, and um, and I I was very sour on the game because of it i just i i still don't really like it's this game but that doesn't change the fact that a lot of people worked on the game a lot of people probably really like the game as um, well but really not like they're really passionate about the game really passionate about what they're doing and they were doing the best they could to make a good product of course this is a complicated i'm gonna get back i'm gonna get back to talk about Resident Evil 2 now but it's a complicated discussion really but because uh, you know there's you know we, this is going into all like you know little business and everything there's, there's so much more we could discuss on this topic but it's just a bit of a bit of a babble from me about the situation i don't know why i've still got the shot the shot the shock shot shock shot, shock shot. so this is where this is where the flame rounds come in handy so you can take out basically anything planty um leon will get a flamethrower which is very annoying because those um i find that you have to get too close to the plants and they've got the tendency to poison leon whereas the flame rounds um are nice and far away so I do the shock shot with the liquors here, um, and I realise quite quickly that that's not going to work out for me. So I get the grenade out instead, and I just start going crazy on the, um, the lit on the two liquors. And these are kind of like I don't know what some people say they're evolved liquors. I just think they're just the palette swap liquors is what they are really. But I do think they do do more damage. So you've got to be a little bit more cautious of these folks. Um, I just call them the black liquors, really. Um, yeah, so just yeah, take them out. Take them out grey, grey all the way, basically. I think when I get to the next item box, I um, ditch the liquors for good. And we're, by the way, we're nearly done. We're nearly done with this playthrough. Um, thank you so much if you've listened all this way. I mean, if you're you are a trooper. I mean, I've been commentating this. This is just one complete commentary from start to finish, and it'll be it's kind of unedited and kind of garbage probably you know so not, there'll be lots of um lots of uh, audio errors probably but i thought this would just be interesting to try this instead maybe it could be more of an opportunity to kind of talk about the game but for those of you that have watched this um thank you thank you for tuning in for this i hope you have enjoyed it and um i would really appreciate feedback on it if you let me know um quite pleased with that performance then i managed to take out both those plants in one hit with one flame round <laughs> um let me know if you like the commentary stuff or if you prefer the me like rifting over it why i'm playing it i'm happy to do either to be honest and um because that I, I will do or i'll do both whichever you prefer um yeah keep me posted um let me know of course this is a again like i really praise you for watching this far because this is a slog for you guys you know taking time out of your precious schedules to watch me play resident evil 2 and um 
and that's and, and good and thank, thank you for doing that but um i don't blame you if this is taking you a few attempts to get through um generally what i'd like to try and do and what i'll do for it forward is i like to try and do more shorter videos um short short and sweet really because um, i find those those videos are a bit more digestible but just because it's been a while um i wanted to give you a big nice lump one i probably will do um leon b at some stage that's probably not going to come straight away but that'll come in the future but if you know if, if you guys are if you're keen for it i'll do it sooner rather than later i'll probably do that the same as i've done this one where i will um rift on it later i'll i'll, I'll, I'll do commentary over the top however if you want to have my shot for shot reaction as I'm playing through it let me know I'll see see what you folks say um, so that's three liquors in a row just then I did very well there with the grenade launcher I managed to take I think one of them went down in one hit which is very good and um, the two that appear around the corner seem to go down very easily as well so that's quite rare for me when that happens so yay <laughs> And we're literally, yeah, we're, we're, we're so close to the end. It's uh, it's crazy. It's been, it's been a journey. It's been a journey. Finally, I put the shock shot, shot, shot away. And we're going to finally get rid of that key as well. Uh, I'm just going to do a bit of herb com combination as well. There's a red herb coming up later, but I don't know if my past self has realised that. Yes, I have. Oh, well, no, I haven't. Have I? I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Yes, I must have realised that because I've, I've combined those in advance and then there's a red herb's going to come up later which I'll use. Um, yeah, so basically what we're doing here is we're going to collect a... I think we're just going to find the card key which we need to access a few other areas. Um, then we're going to have an encounter with Annette who's going to inform us that a cure does in fact exist. And then we basically need to construct the cure for Sherry and... Well, yeah, we have, there's like a, a small section for Claire where you got to construct the cure for her uh, before you exit to the final battle and end scenario A, basically. That's it. So now um, this is a bit of a fun section because now um, there's a few more zombies left to kill and I am only packing a grenade launcher. <laughs> so we're going to see a lot of debris, a lot of um, explosions. And I think it might be in this playthrough that I, I sort of realised that the best technique with... Uh, that, that's obviously the, the weapons locker there that we had stretched from Sash from earlier. But this is where I think I realised that the the best technique with the zombies... Because what's the problem? The problem with the grenade launcher, at least with the regular rounds of zombies, is they have a tendency to they'll, they'll blow off their legs. So they'll just be torsos. Like this one, that one you saw there. And then they'll crawl after you. So it's kind of annoying. Um, so I think I did I think I should do this here now, where I start to realise probably the best thing to do, I did do it there, is to aim the grenade launcher up so that you're more likely to take up the top section as well. <laughs> Why I only figured this out recently, because I, I knew this ages with Leon, that the best thing with the shotgun is to aim hard and take the and it just basically blows the head off in a very satisfying animation. <laughs> do I do it here? No, I don't. Maybe I did it a different Who knows? So they're all on fire as well. Satisfying fires there. Little pre rent I think, I think that zombie's still alive. I think you can hear him still <laughs> waddling around in the back. I'm pretty sure I do. I point the grenade launcher up later. There are more zombies to come. Don't you worry. So. Annette, you killed William. <laughs> how did this? Uh, how does she know I killed him? She'd just be like, sort of. She's been hunched in the corner somewhere, lurking, just thinking, hee hee hee. I'm gonna spy on you, Claire. <laughs> Fine, you and my daughter! Take it from me. <laughs> this is the most significant piece of research my husband has ever left in my hands. <laughs> Quite literally Stop in our hands as well. <laughs> Sherry's in serious trouble. William implanted her with his embryos. There's no telling when they'll pupate. And if that happens, then Sherry won't. <laughs> won't. What? Rawr. So we only... We, it's just... It, see, Annette's upset that um, <laughs> William's dead, potentially, but... You, you want to get back in the relationship with this guy? <laughs> and of course, William. William is. Um, he's. I guess he's. That's his message for he wants a divorce. I. I assume, or he just doesn't care because he's more monster than man now. This is kind of the. You know, this is the big sort of transformation. I like what I do here, where I um, go use the lab key. And um, in there, by the way, is a moth, which I don't need to bother with. But um, I might talk. I'll talk about that once we go on this next section. But um, it's so I can just use the, acknowledge the keys being used, so I can discard it for later when I use it on the other door. Basically, now what I could do William is, is um, what you could do, and maybe I should have done this just to show you guys, is that there is this is the final sort of like 
link sure. to scenario A and B Tell is you go I into the moth know. room and you kind How of like get Sherry? your you kill big moth that's in there and um there's like a fingerprint recognition which you can use so you register your fingerprint as like an employee of umbrella or something then you go to another section um in the lab where there's a fingerprint recognition and then you register claire's fingerprint to it and you have to do that in scenario a then when you play it with scenario b and you play as leon you do the same process you register leon's fingerprint and you go back to the same lock and put his fingerprint on it um, and then both fingerprints are then automatically recognized and then a special door unlocks and basically all it is is it, it features some ammo um i think some ammo for the machine gun um and it shows you a test tube of a hunter in it and it's kind of like a i guess kind of an easter egg in a way but the reason i just don't bother with it in this playthrough is i just it just didn't seem worth the time and my time and i was getting really tired by this point my thumb was hurting like crazy <laughs> so i i was i i think i was in massive agony it's because of course you know i've not paused as well this has just been a complete go through um so I, I didn't do that, but I might. I might if 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 you guys are interested in re, if you want to replay through things, I'll do that just to show you. Um, so that that could be something for later down the road. Um, I just don't think I don't. You know, it, it's not amazing. It's really not much in it. It's just it literally is. It's a hunter in a test tube. It's like yeah, oh well done, you played Resident Evil One. <laughs> so so this will be the final kind of at least um, in in game anyway until you get to the end where uh, Claire sees Leon and of course you'll, you'll know all about Leon's story with scenario B um, so she just gets on, gets on the gets on the radio one last time to inform him and then you'll you'll obviously hear about the conversation the other way around if you play the scenario what where he is at the moment what's rather entertaining actually is um, at this point in the game for Leon um, in scenario B he's got um, let's just say he's got some bandages around him which he conveniently doesn't have in this section and also Surprisingly, something rather traumatic has just happened to Leon, but he's he seems he seems to have got over it very quickly. Um, yeah, Leon Leon um, gets stalked by Mr. X a lot. <laughs> he's a trooper, Leon. That's all. That's all we know. <laughs> so here we go. Like, so that's kind of like this. So Claire. Now, the mission basically now is that Claire just needs to uh, create the vaccine for Sherry, and then we can enter the last section. Uh, the self-destruct system has been activated, <laughs> of course. And depending on sort of your backtracking, this can get on your nerves quite a bit. The, with that, you'll be hearing the lady in the background saying, "Oh, all employees, please evacuate." It. But the music kind of makes up for it, I guess. It is kind of epic and it's tense, and you know you're thinking, "Oh, you know, you've got to get through this." But but the timer won't sort of set off. The actual, you know, the detonation timer won't set off until you get to the final encounter. Which is a kind of a staple for the Resident Evil games, you know, or, you know you've got a limited time to, to get through this section. They try and put a bit of a remix on it when you get to Resident Evil 3 with that ending, but I think, yeah, maybe we should change it up a bit, but, yeah, again, some things don't change. <laughs> so, we've got to go back to, it's basically one more door where we've got to get the, not only do we need to get the sort of the base vaccine and everything, but we've got to get the MO, the MO disc. The MO disc, which would um, be very important in the original Resident Evil, if you want to get the good ending, we have to find three of them to unlock um, the cell of whichever other character you didn't play as. So yeah, again, flame rounds as well, just, they just make the job easy. One shot to those plant creatures. If you play um, Fourth Survivor, which is the scenario that's unlocked when you play through scenario A and B and you get to play through his hunk basically in a special scenario where he's got to basically get the G virus to umbrella or something. Um, that's bloody hard and you don't have any fire um, <laughs> fiery weapons and the, the plants appear in that sort of like slog through the police station to get to the end and they're in narrow corridors so you've got a choice of either take him out with a handgun, a shotgun and a magnum all of which are equally crap <laughs> against, against the plants. <laughs> But maybe I'll do that playthrough one day. But and then uh, yeah, I mean, one joke I was thinking of doing because I, I I die so much in that playthrough. Then you can do a fun montage of how many times I fail. Um, they'll probably be always at the same section now, I imagine. Damn plants. Uh, so yeah, and as you can see, um, I've got plenty of ammo. I'm doing okay, and I I, I didn't need to be as cautious as I have been. Um, tons of fire ammo. Um, I don't think that zombie's dead. No, he's not dead. God, yeah, he, he's a trooper. He just took a full grenade launcher there. And then... Do I realise it here? Is this where I realise I should aim it up? I don't think I do still. I think maybe it's not till the end bit where I see those last zombies. So, yeah, I've got to turn on the machine. If we do. And then you, you 
collect you use the bait use the um sort of this, the base vaccine or something to get it get the thing the, the vaccine cart there you go get it spinning and then you get obviously get the mo disc as well yeah oh no, yeah he, he just he just had to go nibbling at me but claire does a nice good old kick so there we go and then we just get get that vaccine working and then we go collect it and then we've got to collect, I think, is it the ammo? That's the, yeah, that'll be the ammo disc there, won't it? So we need the ammo disc to obviously access the final um, area. And really now, it's just a slog to the end. Um, just got to go back to that room where those zombies were before, where I collected the key. And um, then we do one last boss fight. And then this is what I have to say for me when I do these no save playthroughs. The, this is where my, my heart starts to race a bit and I get a bit, a bit tense and a bit protective what you'll see me do is you'll see me um, stock up on health items <laughs> quite a bit because <laughs> I do start to panic especially if you're playing this without saving um, that's, kind of, that's kind of all the whole risky thing because um, the the last boss fight is essentially like equivalent of say like a tyrant fight I mean I'll spoil it now it's just Willi it's William transformed again essentially and um, he's deadly he's pretty deadly in one of his forms um, and you can die incredibly easily if you don't if you don't if you're not careful and that's the thing with some of these really big boss battles is the you know a good three swipes at you uh, maybe even two in some cases and you're done you know? so you gotta be careful sometimes even if you ask even though I I stock up on the health items and sometimes it's not always that helpful so you gotta be um, be quick on the menu button quick on that menu button to heal when you need to um, the thing to be aware of though, unfortunately, which does happen, and has happened to me, is if they've already sort of started the, the, I guess you would call it like their kill attack, or like their deadly attack, which would finish you off and give you this sort of satisfying, you're dead, <laughs> sort of game over screen. Um, if they've already started that, regardless if you've gone into the menu, then you're stuffed either way, even if you've got full health. Um, so that's kind of annoying, so you want to yeah, try and avoid that if you can. The only way that I think they, they do do that sort of, like, and certainly hunters in the original game, the only reason they'll start doing that in the first place um, is if you're in the red. Um, but you basically don't want them to be doing that, doing or getting in that process. So I think this bit here is where I finally point the gun up. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I come to the sudden realisation that maybe pointing the gun up will be the most effective. I don't know why I start picking up those herbs. So I take out these. Uh, these are the naked zombies. Because, you know, we've got to have naked zombies in the Umbrella Lab. Now, I do... This is the, the last door to get to the end. And I do use the MO disc... The... the, the, the what did I say? The NO? The MO disc just to unlock it. But I obviously don't go through yet. You can't... I, I don't believe you can through. I've never actually tried, actually. But I imagine it would say I've got... Probably say, I'm going to go kill Sherry! You're a saver! Otherwise you get... <laughs> you know, they give you got the bad ending, maybe. <laughs> Sherry dies. <laughs> but... That'd be quite... It'd be interesting if they did that. Yeah, you know, maybe you forgot. Maybe you just forgot to do the vaccine. <laughs> it just says, Claire, you're stupid. I don't feel actually though. I'm pretty sure the game won't allow you. Because you're still... Even though the, um, the alarms are going off and everything, um... You can't go further. You can't progress. Um, and there's no timer or anything like that. You're still safe here. You can you can hang around for as long as you want uh, until you've done like the next critical section. You, you're good, basically. Um, yes, I say. Well, it's not until we go down that down that sort of corridor into the next room where uh, I think it's a five minute timer that goes off. So we're nearly there. So Annette's still just yeah, she's just hanging out. <laughs> but. Um, because there was one, we left one zombie behind. Now this would be interesting because I don't think he's there anymore. Because I think I remember going back through here. So I guess if you have, if you've turned the zombies into a severed heart, if they're, if they're half there, then they'll disappear when you re-enter the room. <laughs> I could be wrong, but I don't hear anything. It seems pretty dead to me. There we go. So it's the last little bit. This is just going to form the vaccine. And what's good about this section? is that it will um, it will become like your key item so that will go in my lockpick slot because I just don't need the lockpick anymore I've not needed the lockpick for ages um, and there we go so that goes up there we have quite a few health items we should be good but well, we know we're good because I've already said this is a no safe playthrough we know we know this is successful so I'm, I'm great at the tension aren't I <laughs> so but it doesn't change how sort of I do I, I, I do find these these boss fights kind of unpredictable still. I'm still, you see, I, 
Although I play through Resident Evil 2, I do probably dabble in it at least once a year at least, I think. Um, and when I do dabble in it, I dabble in it quite hard, like I'll play through it multiple times. And certainly when it's on a PSP or portable system, it's uh, that's a slippery slope. Um, when I sort of commute and stuff, um, you know, you can play through games multiple times on those. I, I played through Final Fantasy VII infamously when I used to commute to London. Um, uh, now that was quite satisfying actually, because um, it, it gave me an opportunity to kind of replay and re um, re love that game again, um, which is good. Which is something I just don't think I would have had the chance to do on the console anymore, uh, just because of the lack of time really. Um, and just being distracted by other commitments and all that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, so that's why yeah, port port portable gaming to me is the ideal place for RPGs. So we're nearly there, we're going to um, final, final, final bit down the corridor. I didn't really touch on the fact that obviously Claire, both, both Claire's and Leon's outfits will change through the game, which is a change from the original Resident Evil. Um, kind of neat. Yeah. Doesn't seem like you know, it doesn't really hold up particularly well nowadays. Doesn't really matter, really, does it? I don't. Know. I usually feel that's kind of cool before. So, five minutes to go. Minutes uh, well, we're obviously not five minutes to go of this commentary, but <laughs> so basically, you just end up to the elevator, you get that ball rolling, and we will be in for a final boss fight. And I'm by this point, I am sweating because thinking, am I going to make it or am I not? Because I have done so many playthroughs, particularly on PSP, where I have died here. So I've got all that way, done all of that effort, and then just died. <laughs> As you do. Good. So the strategy I go with, that's William Birkin in his kind of new form. I go back far away, I've got the chemical rounds, and I'm just trying to just kind of wail on him really. And the idea is I try and get him to transform early if I can. I obviously I'm not successful here. I um So it was just I was literally one hit away as well. So now he's transforming into like this kind of dog version of himself. And this is where he does get very unpredictable and quite a bit annoying. And um, I, I, try and, I try and play things a bit too safe I think here, because what I try and do is I try to attack him um, when he's jumping up on the cylinders. So he's up on there, so he's going to do that now. Um, I take my health of course, make sure I'm dying. And I, and I think I miss him. Um, no, I didn't do there actually, I did quite well there, I got two good hits in, but yeah, I do, I'm doing it here, but it's obviously having no effect. Um, so I'm going to try it here, and I think it completely missed him, so as you can see, it's not even hitting him, it's just hitting the side. So I'm just wasting ammo here. So I, I just kind of just thought, I just go for the whole, like, oh, I'll just try and, and this is a bad place to be. This is, that is not sensible at all, because that's where you get the, just completely impaled. And that, of course, does drain the health. <laughs> Even though it's in the radio caution, I'm still playing it very safe because of events that happened previously in the game uh, with the liquor. So I'm trying to prevent anything, any any damage whatsoever. I'm just being careful. So I'm still okay. So I don't I don't think I yeah. And I've run out of ammo as well, so I have to switch over to the um, the regular one, which is not as not as good because it's uh, again you got to be too close to him. But I think I'm almost there. I've got um yeah, again I've got several. I'm I'm fine for health items, but and there we go. And I did it. And I was so I was doing that the happy dance when that happened because it was just so satisfying. Because <laughs> I was I was I was really panicking, thinking, "Oh God, I'm not going to do it. Oh dear, done all this stuff. I've recorded all this footage. I'm going to die." <laughs> and it ended up nothing to worry about. We were good. Um, and then all it is now is is pretty straightforward. We leave William to be I don't know, be William. <laughs> And uh, I guess really, when you play for this the first time, you're assuming you are really assuming that that's it. You don't. You, you, I don't think. Definitely for me, you never. You never assuming there's a scenario B. You never think there's another playthrough of the game. Um, so you would be right in thinking, oh, that's the end. And then you, just, you simply just run down the corridor, and the ending. The ending stuff starts basically. And to be honest, as it was, as it is like this in scenario, I was, I was perfectly satisfied with the ending. And like most people, I put disc one in and I played through Leon A first <laughs> because nobody told me that Claire A was the canon end, canon pathway. It doesn't matter at the end of the day. That's only for people that you know. That, I guess give a sod about the story, but but both 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 scenarios are fine. It doesn't matter. Play the game you want to play it. Play the game the way you want to play it, guys. Um, 
Yeah. Certainly, I think that you know, if you if you're brand new to it, you know, don't don't feel ashamed to put on like easy mode. And certainly, the American version of the game has a like an arranged mode that gives you like just stocks you with weapons and ammo and makes that first playthrough very very easy. Um, and you know, and that that to me is kind of part of the learning experience if you're getting into these games. Is that I, I that's how I certainly learned from a lot of my games. Is that I, I always played on easy mode first, just learn everything and get used to it, and then you bump up the difficulty when you're comfortable. You know, and then you just then you then you invent your own difficulty like I do here, and put <laughs> and don't try to do no safe playthroughs. But yeah, the um, the music playing is certainly a nice relief after going through all of that. Um, and we're almost at two hours and a half. I guess that's because it's going to clean the cutscenes as well. But we're nearly there. And my voice is just ready to just die. <laughs> and then we just have a nice sweet moment between Claire and Sherry because that's what we had. And then um, I think I think I do show it in this footage that only when you kind of finish the game, the credits roll, and you get your score picture, do you see the see the opportunity to basically save the game and then um it will save um and then start it as leon b then you know oh there's another one now what you might have done i certainly did this when i was younger um is you know if you don't have your memory card <laughs> you might have been a little bit screwed when that happened um mostly because you know we were, we were quite prominent renters really but i i don't i said that just then but i don't think i ever managed to successfully play through resident Evil 2 without saving back then that's silly but but some people might have done i'd say so so obviously having your memory card is essential yeah but i i i very much like this uh last bit of score that plays in the credits it's just that lovely piece of calm um I like it a bit more than the rocky version they do in scenario b's credits yeah but yeah that that is resident evil 2 a, a derpy um <laughs> no safe playthrough from myself um Hope you've got. Hope you have enjoyed this commentary. I, mean, I, don't, I don't know how well this is going to go down, but this was sort of just to make up for the. Because I, I said I know with the Sonic one, I was going to do sort of regular ones, but again, it's just life just got in the way a bit. It happens. I'm not going to say it's not going to happen again moving forward. It might probably will, but you know, uh, they come out when they come out, I guess. But you know, if you want to you keep up with my my shenanigans. Um, best place probably is to follow me on Twitter I'll always link if there's new content there but of course do continue to follow GamingHistory101.com uh, for Fred is consistently putting out lots of fun content there and um, very very interesting stuff there as well as well as obviously the podcasts are going there too um, and there's also our Discord which I do highly recommend uh, to people which I think is linked on the website GamingHistory101.com where you can uh, chat to fine fellows um, it is, of course, moderated though uh, by Fred and myself. Of course, P we we only want like nice people there, which I'm sure you are. If you're if you're watching this, you probably are. Because <laughs> who's gonna watch, who's gonna tune in to watch my stuff? <laughs> but anyway, but, but yeah, I, but I hope you enjoy this playthrough. Yeah, give me some feedback if you want to. Uh, yeah, if you want to see scenario B, if you want me to play through it, um, and if you want me to talk as I play through it, or if you just want me to comment on it afterwards, what you prefer. Otherwise, um, what I'm hoping to do, I do have other retro game that's already recorded, so I'll see if I can churn one out, um, another one out again for you very soon, and we'll go from there. But this has been Resident Evil 2. But of course, before we finish, we've got to see the results page. Because here it is. Uh, but this anyone that follows us on Discord would have already seen this results page. Um, I, I posted this up there, and of course I, put, I posted my thumb injury as well. <laughs> sort of like some redness. I think people were not focused on the thumb; they're more focused on the thumb stick of what that looked like. <laughs> so, so yeah, you get well, after the credits are rolled, you get your results screen. It tells you how well you did. Um, as far apparently according to the instruction manual, you can get an S ranking. I didn't actually know that. <laughs> Uh, which S apparently, according to the instructions, stands for superior. Um, I always always thought it meant special, but pff, whatever. <laughs> as far as I'm aware, I don't think I've ever got an S ranking. I'm assuming S to get the S ranking. You probably have to go through without healing yourself. Um, probably not save as well. You probably have to not save and heal. There are certain criteria, I think, to obtain those. I know certainly time is one of them. The quicker you do it, the better your ranking and... But I think there's there's a, a combination because I did say well I got a I got a rocket launcher, <laughs> which but it does it does tell you you will receive less points by using a special weapon. I think I did just for kicks. I did go do a playthrough where I just only use the rocket launcher. I think if you only use the rocket launcher but you still go through fast, you can get a B. I think it's almost impossible to get an A though. <laughs> so. 
I don't, I don't know how the points system works. It'd be interesting to know. Or maybe I need to read into why that it, well, how that works. There's, there's probably some expert folk that know more. Why it says pause there, I don't know. That confused me when I saw that. But then fortunately it goes to the save screen. So save the game. This is the only time I've saved it. And it creates Leon B. So and we're all ready to play through that next. But of course, my thumb was tired. There's no way I could have set up the second scenario at this stage. Because not unless I could somehow use my other hand. But that would just be weird. Uh, so I'm just there. Yeah, I'm just showing off that there's a ranged game. Which is a rookie mode. Which is in, uh, like I said, in the American version. But I believe it's not featured in the UK original version of the game. And there you can see in the options. It's got Leon Story or Claire Story. You can switch to Leon Story basically. It still says Claire Story there. I'm switching to Leon Story now. Just to, just to show as an example. But yeah, but that's that though, guys. Um, that's that's really all there is to this playthrough in this commentary. I hope you've had fun. I will see you next time. Have a mad one.